football fans, and welcome to our very special 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of Three and Out, right here on IA Sports Radio, your directly for all that is sports. Here we go! Let's get it! One time for Turkey Day! That is right, y'all. We are back at it. Starting things off here tonight with an extra show this week. And why do we have an extra show, you ask? Well, it's just a special occasion. That's right, y'all. Tonight, we will have three primetime face-offs. All three of them. In favor of our Thanksgiving matchups. That's right, y'all. Hope you're ready to rock and roll because it's going to be a good one. Coming up first tonight, we have two newcomers starting us off. Well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I had a little change of plans. See, there's two gentlemen who have been going head to head for the last two years for this very special game. And tonight, in about 10 minutes, they will go head to head yet again. I'm talking about none other than Mr. Fat Mac himself, Callum Reynolds, taking on the Wait a Minute Show's very own, Jelani, J.B. Bodie. That's right, they're going head-to-head tonight. Also, on top of that, we have two newcomers, the oldest teams to face off in Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, that's right. Miss Wanda representing the Bears and Miss Adina representing the Lions. Uh Uh-oh, we have ourselves a cat fight for a Thanksgiving matchup. It's going to be a good one in attendance tonight. Welcoming back, it's been a while, the lovely Miss ABCMD. That's right, D returns to take on Mr. Texas himself. Literally, Mr. Texas himself. For those Cowboys and Bills, or for the Cowboys and Bills matchup, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a long, fun show in front of us. It is time for Thanksgiving. We are going to be talking about Week 12 and, of course, Week 13 as show number one of our special 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of 3 and Out kicks off. Sit back and enjoy. It's about that time. You are tuned in live to 3 and Out right here on IE Sports Radio. You are directly for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 football fans. Well, I hope you're ready because Turkey Day is almost here. That's right. Tonight is going to be a fun one, as it always is, right? So I just want to say first and foremost, as I always say, uh, but it's going to be a little bit different. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, all glory to God. That's right. That's right. All glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without him, nothing is possible. That's right. Big ups to the man upstairs. And hey, we got to give one more thing, one more big ups to all of you out there, the listeners. Because without you guys, we ain't crap at High Sports Radio. I'll tell you that right now. We ain't nothing. We ain't nothing without y'all. So we appreciate you so much. And I just got to say, I'm thankful every day, hey, for another day of life, for another breath of air. I'm thankful for, for, for everything. I'm thankful for, for my family and friends, for, of course, like I said, the man above. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I am thankful for all of you out there, y'all. Seriously, I'm thankful for this thing going on for five years it ha- as it has, and just so much love coming from all of y'all. I couldn't, I could not appreciate y'all enough. And and once again, just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I mean, the applause button's going crazy tonight. My bad, but I just want to say hey, thank you because I am thankful for all of you. So thank you so very much, y'all. With that said, y'all, we have ourselves a little bit of fun going on tonight. That's all right. Of course, going on with our three primetime face-offs, well, it's time to earn an IE Sports Radio t-shirt. That's right, y'all. We have another t-shirt giveaway tonight, and I introduce 
the brand new IE Sports Radio hoodies. That's right. They are coming, and they're coming next week. So if uh, you're interested in a hoodie, stay tuned because we all will tell you how to earn one of, well, how to, um, you know, how to win one of those on Thanksgiving Day. And tonight I will tell you how you will, you can win a Thanksgiving, or sorry, you can win what is kind of Thanksgiving shirt, but you can, uh, win a shirt tonight. So, with that said, before we get on to our first primetime face-off, I will be asking five random questions throughout this entire show. Okay? If you answer those questions, well, if you answer those questions correctly, when I ask them, if you are the first to answer them correctly in the chat room, we're going to have five questions. The first person to three will win the shirt. Okay. My boy Texas is tuned in right now. He'll be joining us later on tonight. But if you are the first to three, okay, so jump in the chat room. Everybody jump in the chat room on Spreaker. I will not accept the answers in our group, for our three and out group um, on Twitter. It has to be in the, uh, in the, uh, the chat room. Okay. So it has to be on there. And... Make sure that you got your answers correctly. Yes, you can look them up and all the good stuff, but you have to be first, okay? You have to be the first to put them in there. Now, if you get all three, cool, okay? I'm sorry, if you get all five, that's awesome. But I'm only looking for the person who gets three first, all right? So, if you get if you if you if you answer all three questions, one, two, three, and you're the first one to get them, well, then the next two will just be bonuses for everybody, and we'll have some fun. Or maybe we can give another way another shirt. Maybe just saying. But uh, the first person to three answers correctly. Now, if you now say we get to all five questions and we have like two, two, one, well, then I guess I'll just give away two shirts to the, for people who got two right. So as you can see, we'll have some fun with that. But make sure to answer all of the questions inside of the speaker chat room, okay, for a free shirt. And then of course we will get into the uh how we can how you guys can win a free IE Sports Radio hoodie. So, with that said, y'all, we gotta get into our first prompt on face-off. These two gentlemen couldn't wait. The time, of course, is what did it, because they, you know, have different things going on. But, I just gotta say, we gotta, the first one is probably gonna set the tone. If these two are gonna go at it. They do it every year. Jelani J.B. Bodie of the Wait a Minute Show, and Mr. Kyle Reynolds of IE Sports Radio. One's a diehard Saints fan, Mr. Gumbo himself, Kyle Reynolds. The other one, well, Jelani J.B. Bodie is a diehard Falcons fan, all the way from the ATL. Jelani's from the ATL, well, over there in the ATL, and Kylum is from the Bayou over there, so yeah, this one hits close to home for both of them. They're diehards. Trust me, you want to be, you want to tune in for this one, y'all. So with that said, the time has come. Oh yes, the time has come. If you're ready, let me know. Because here we go, y'all, here it is. But after this commercial break, when we get back, well... Here comes the very first primetime face-off of our special 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of 3 and Out. Oh, it's going to be fun. I hope you're ready to rock and roll. Let's get it, y'all. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned in live to our special 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of 3 and Out. Right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Faces Loaded is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done.
wrestling fans in the podcast world, you are in the right place to listen to the right show, the premier show in the professional wrestling podcasting world. This is Ring Rambling Radio, and you are listening to one of the co-hosts. I am Martin Sandoval, a.k.a. the Soul Cal Saint, along with my two co-hosts, the lovely Felicia and my boy Matt. Yes, every Saturday or every other Saturday morning, you can listen to us, the premier wrestling team, giving you the premier wrestling news, rumors, updates, event discussions, everything that has to do with professional wrestling, you're in the right place. IE Sports Radio presents Ring Rambling Radio. Don't miss it, because it's just too sweet! Drivers, start your engines. Auto racing takes many forms, from the close quarter contact of NASCAR to the high-speed, high-risk atmosphere of IndyCar, all the way to the pinnacle of technology with the Formula One World Championship. No matter if you prefer the high banks of Daytona, the concrete canyons of Long Beach, or the flowing curves of the Nürburgring, the international language of motorsports is simple. Go fast, run hard, and come home first. So join us, myself, Daryl Kinsey Jr., Lolita Camello, and Michael Ward, on a world tour of all the best motorsports has to offer on the Extra Mile, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, only on your home for all, that is sports, i.e. sports radio. Welcome back, football fans. Well, here we go. (laughs) Just as I was hoping for, this has become a tradition. A lot like how the Saints and the Falcons playing on Thanksgiving is becoming a little bit like a tradition because they played the Thursday night the last couple of years as well. On three and out, we have a little tradition going as well. And these two gentlemen, there's a lot of respect there, I I think. Uh, But I'll tell you what. The, 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 there, there is, there is really not a whole bunch of love lost when they go at it with their football teams. Because my gosh, the battle is real. I'll tell you that right now. Both these guys are full of knowledge. They love their teams, and let's just be realistic. When it comes time for a rivalry, when it comes time for the rivalry matchup on Thanksgiving, especially, there's no holds bar. And these two guys have no idea what the word <laughs> surrender is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming for the first. Primetime face-off of the evening. It was supposed to be the last one, but once again, time constraints and the whole bit. But it honestly turned out to be the best because not to diss our other primetime face-offs, the other two are going to be awesome tonight, but these two right here, the main event's just coming early, guys. That's all it is because here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, primetime face-off number one of the evening is underway. Representing the away team, he is diehard Saints fan, all the way from the Bayou. He is proud member of the IE Sports Radio family. I know things have been a little scarce lately because you know my schedule's been crazy. But he'll be right back at it soon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, he is pr- a, a proud member of the IE Sports Radio family. He is. Without a doubt, one of the most knowledgeable, ba- knowledgeable basketball and football fans I've probably ever talked to in my entire life. And he has one of the most amazing acronyms for a nickname that is amazingly touching as well as just amazing, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, faith and trials make a Christian. Helping hands, loving hearts make the world a better place, as he always likes to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming the Fat Mac himself. <laughs> Mr. Gumbo, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Callum Reynolds, what's going on, Callum? Man, what's going on, family? What's going on, Larry? How y'all doing, man? I smell something brewing in the kitchen. Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, family? What's going on, man? Hey
And Saints Gumbo to be exact. I'm with it, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Colin Reynolds is back in the building. I'm using this. I'm using in the building tonight. Why? Because there is a man who says in the building quite a quite quite a, a, a lot of at a time on his show. And what can I say? When you listen to his show, it just pulls you in like like. I don't know, like 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 if your TV was pulling you, with sucking you in, in in a nightmare. But in this case, it's not a nightmare. It's quite the pleasant dream because the way the mini show is anything, anything but a nightmare, and every bit of sensation you could want. Trust me, you want you hear the commercials, ladies and gentlemen. You listen to IE Sports Radio. You we hear the you hear the drops playing all throughout the shows. You hear this man's comedic, yet serious, yet extremely sports knowledgeable voice. It, what can he say, man? The guy is just a podcaster through and through. In my opinion, the, the, the guy needs his very own, I mean, he needs a talk show. What can I say? I can't, I can't give this guy enough props, and I couldn't ask for, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for a better matchup tonight from with these two. But of course, if you want the real deal in sports, guys... Hey, iSports Radio is here, but you gotta check out the Wait a Minute show. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. And the host of that show is here tonight, quote unquote, in the building, as he loves to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming, as I called him earlier when I answered the phone, the man, the myth, the legend. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Jelani J.B. Bodhi! What's going on, Jelani? Larry B. In the place to be. What's up? I'm in here. Man, yes, right, but that is right. Man, I'm so, I'm so freaking hyped up right now, man. I'm telling you, I'm so excited for this. Ladies and gentlemen, there's usually time limits on these. I- I'm not even all I know is when they gotta go they they'll bounce but I'm just saying uh usually there's a time limit I, I can't have time limits on these guys because they don't even listen it's a, they will go head to head so let's get right to the battle so that way we don't even gotta waste no time and they can have all the time they they, they want or the, all the time they have tonight ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Let's boogie, baby! Here we go! Ladies and gentlemen, let's start things off here tonight with the X-Factors. You gotta love the X-Factors. They are something that are just... They loom, y'all. They really do. They they make a difference. And, well, tonight we're gonna find out all about them. Colum, let us know, brother. You are the away team. You go first tonight. Give me your X-Factors. for Or X-Factor or X-Factors for... Uh, Thursday night's game, when all of y'all are either putting down the turkey, either uh, pff, laid up on the couch, enjoying this game after, because I know I'm probably going to be laid up, and, and I, I'm going to enjoy the game, but I don't know if I'm going to be moving very much after my, my belly's all full. But with that said, Colum, tell us, man, who are your X-Factors, or is your X-Factor for this game on Thursday night that'll help y'all beat the Falcons? I said it. Uh-oh. 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 Yeah, that's right. What's going down, Colum? Who are your X-Factors? Factors, man. All right, well, first, this X Factor is a two part thing. It has to work immediately for it to work. As you know, a few weeks back, Falcons came out the bye week and punched us in the mouth. But one thing I can tell you is it will not happen again. And the X Factor is our, D- our offensive line with the injury to Andrew Speed and Terran Armstead. We have to block. We have to block. They put Drew Brees on the term. Pressure was outrageous. I give him. All cool and prop. But our offensive line has to be in unison to give Drew Brees some time. And the X Factor that's gonna that's gonna benefit from that blocking will be Jared Cook. These last few weeks Jared Cook has come he's come to himself making phenomenal catches. And in, even in the in the past even in the uh, past protection and the run blocking, he's been making himself useful. And I think this week everybody's only on Camara, everybody's only on Michael Thomas, the best wide receiver in the league. Jared Cook is going to be beneficial to that, and he's going to have a huge shame in, in, in all that. Oh, boy. Jelani J.B. Bodie, he just said Jared Cook is going to take flight in that beautiful stadium of yours, which y'all seem to share a manufacturer name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, so with that said, all right, Jelani, you just heard this man, what he had to say right now. Now I want your X Factor or X Factors. Who's going to get down for y'all to sweep, I said it, the Saints this year? What you got, Jelani? Oh, Larry B. Um, B. 
basically, you know, we everyone know we've had our challenges, but uh, when it comes to this matchup, uh, there are no uh, records don't mean anything. Um, it's basically all about living in the now, you know. Um, and I think Colin would agree with me, you know, on that where I say records don't mean anything. So for for this matchup for Thursday, for Thursday night here in the ATL, uh, where it will be on fire. I got two, actually, I got a guy and then I got a group. Oh. So the first one is going to be on the offensive side. And right now, um, we're used to this, but Julio Jones is now out of practice. Now, I, I attended last week's game against the Bucks, and and I saw that myself as far as like that shoulder in, injury that he had. Uh, it seems like it was a little bit more serious uh, than Norm because normally with Julio, it's always his foot. He always has something, you know, with a foot injury and he sits out. But since he's such a, a, a consummate pro and, and just how talented he is, he can miss games, but with his shoulder, it's a little bit different, a little bit different injury, so he's been sitting out, but for that wide receiver core, we know it's going to be Julio, we know it's going to be, you know, Ridley, Cooper is, uh, is probably not going to play uh, in this game, so my first X Factor uh, is still going to be on the offensive side, uh, he had a pretty decent game this past week, uh, and that is Russell Gage, uh, he is going to have to step up, he is going to have to be a factor, uh, he's going to have to take off some of that heat, uh, like Colin was just talking about on that defense, because they're going to be trying to key in uh, guys like Marcus Davenport, guys like Ka- uh, Cam Jordan, uh, and, and Demario Davis, so uh, quick slant quick passes uh, taking on you know their third DB he's going to have to be the X factor so that's why I have the X factor on the offensive side on the defensive side because this thing has been so up and down uh, I'm going to go with the defensive group and, and I'm talking about everybody on the defense you know for the Falcons they need to get back to what we saw these past you know two weeks before they played the Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, guys like Vic Beasley he's going to have to be an X factor guys like uh, uh, Adrian Claiborne he's going to have to be and, and I say an X factor because they're going to have to play as a unit uh, that has been the, some of the struggles that the Falcons have had in the past they have not played as a cohesive unit so the X factor for me on the defense side is actually the entire defense playing as one. So those are my two X factors. I love it. Oh my goodness. Jelani just gave us a thesis right now. I'm loving it. Uh oh. I can see Colin right now. Colin's like looking out the window like yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Larry. Listen. Listen. Oh, no. I'm sitting listening to my J.D. Bodie. You know there's nothing wrong with me and Al. We always compliment each other's team. It's good, really, right now, have anything to, to really uh, debate what he's saying because he's making some great points. But the defense is not going to get no crap, man. Listen, we come into we come into Al and complain the gumbo, but listen, he brought out defense. I, I didn't bring out a defense extract yet, so I can easily say, you know, big names, you know, Cam Jordan, you know, I can, I can bring out the stars of the defense, but my extract for this week. On defense will be Marcus Davenport. He has the man up the middle and just punch uh, Matt Ryan in the mouth and show him that, you know, today is a good uh, number in ATM. Just for uh, a side note, uh, Larry, I don't know if you know this, but, bro, I drive over um, on part time down here in New Orleans. In the Saturday before the game, I actually had the opportunity to drive the team doctors from the Falcon. They were going to be saying certain things. Some whole certain things that was told to me. But all I really didn't know is that the Atlanta Falcons are easily bruised. And I can use that's the cleanest I can put it. They're easily bruised. So once Davenport and Jordan and Garner Johnson punch Matt Ryan and the rest of those so kids in their mouth, it's going to be gumbo in ATL, baby. And you know what, Larry? I'm going back to last year, baby. Our gumbo got a new ingredient called it Falcon, baby. Oh, gobble, gobble, bird, bird. Look at you. Okay, 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 okay. I, I told you guys, man. It's go- I, I know. It's going. Oh, my gosh. Jelani. Larry, 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 Larry,
uh, that that column is talking about he's cooking or whatever. It's some soup or whatever. It, 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 you're right. It is a soup. It's an alphabet soup. And you know what's in that alphabet? Nothing but L. That's what's going to be going on with that soup that he's talking about. Uh, I know Colin is not trying to say anything about people and injuries and being soft. Last time I checked, Alvin Kamara has missed games. Last time I checked, Marcus Davenport, the same person he was talking about that needs to punch somebody in the mouth, he needs to punch his toe in the mouth because he's going down with toe injuries and missing games. And then Marcus Lattimore has missed games too. So what are you talking about as far as like guys getting hurt? And now, he's not going to get off your breeze because he rarely gets hurt. So I'm now I'm gonna leave him off that list. Right now, I am gonna leave him off that list. But I don't wanna hear nothing about nobody getting hurt when you got people on your squad that be sitting out, that be sitting on the sidelines, sitting next to Mexico, sitting next to cash money brothers, watching the game. You said you said yourself that Julio's the best the wide receiver in the league, and he get bruised up, and he still plays the game. Why are you sitting on practice? He's like Adam Robinson. Practice? We talking about practice? Show up on this Sunday, man. We come to your hometown. Because he don't, he don't need practice. Especially for your day. Day to day. <laughs> you bring the dressing, I bring the rules. How about I just bring the W, and you keep those L's. Yeah. I mean, I mean but you know, that's just, if you want to be considered your Super Bowl, I told you earlier. This is your Super Bowl day. You know, it's cool. It's cool, but and, 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 and what did I say? I guess, I guess we're going to be back to back Super Bowl champs because we win it Thursday. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah, loving Larry. it. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry. this is what you get with these two every time. What, what happened? What happened, Kyle? Talk to me. I, I just figured out, you know, I, I know we brothers at heart, man. And I just thought about it. So let me tell you a little bit because the beast stands for both that. Just like the same sweet both that. <laughs> I'm loving it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is Kyle and Jelani classics, y'all. Classic. Looks like we have another classic on the rise right now. Let's get on in to the weaknesses. Ladies and gentlemen, get your popcorn. It's going to be a show. Callum, oh boy, I oh my gosh, this is gonna be fun. Remember, it's 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 half past the hour. I don't know when this is gonna end, but be ready for this. Callum, pick out your weaknesses on the Falcons that you feel that your Saints can exploit uh, can exploit and take advantage of to help y'all beat them on the road on Thanksgiving night. Okay, Larry, see last time. I gave him the props, they, like I said, third in the second, they pointed him out, you know? And sometimes when the bigger person uh, gets hit from the heart by the weaker vessel, she kind of stunned, and you, you know, we couldn't shake back from that. Stop on the game. But in this time, if you don't remember five minutes ago, Jelani is begging for the win of the entire group of defensive team to win the game. Listen, that defense is suspect. They will not, I will be will not. Any sports commentator or any great podcaster such as Jelani himself, no for a fact that the Falcons will not stop the Saints like that again. And this whole entire defense will be exploited. Yes, I said it. Exploited. Matter of fact, Kamara hasn't been, like you said, he hasn't been all the way right since the beginning of the year. You know, Jared Cook is just getting in his, in his routine. And, I mean, Michael Thomas, can't go on Mike, can't stop Mike. Man, listen, I don't know what you think about Jared. I'm glad you went to the game this week. So you just go ahead, gobble, gobble, eat your dress, and take a nap. Oh my gosh, Jelani, he just said that they're going to light up, they're going to light up your defense like the 4th of July on Christmas and it's on Thanksgiving. Did you hear that, Jelani? Jelani, defend your team. Uh, am, I, uh, am I picking the weak link? Are you, what am I doing here? You, what do you want me to do? You're, you're going to defend your team. Is what You're going to put the weak link coming up? Okay. Right. But defend right. your team. Right. Talk about him. Talk 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 about how his little plan there is it, just not going to fly, and then he's going to do the same thing with you. I mean, it, it, it's not going to fly. I mean, here's the thing. And I'm, I'm going to put this real, really, really simple. Okay, the Falcons have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose, and you know why they don't have anything to lose? 
because they already punched him in the mouth once, just like he said. They already know they're going to punch him in the mouth once again. Julio, he's going to come out there. He's going to dominate like he always do. Calvin Ridley, I'm going to say it right now. He's going to be the leading wide receiver on the Falcon team. Actually, I might even go even further to just say he might even outdo Camp Dollar Mike. Whoa, no, come on, Delani. Come on, man. You're drinking. Yeah, it's your own. Yeah, it's your own. It's your own for the energy. Yeah, it's your own for the energy. Yeah, put that on. Yeah, put that on the energy. Put that on the energy, Delani. Because the man is here for the job, people. And he's drinking on the job. Get him. Somebody stop it. <laughs> no. So, that is. That could be very well a possibility. I'm just, I'm just telling you right now. Now, Larry B will tell you. Larry B will tell you. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've made predictions before about what the Falcons would do, and you know what? The same people said things like you, Kyle. They said I was drinking. They said I was on something. But then after the game went down. All of a sudden, everything came true. Everything came to the light. And where were those people that were trying to laugh at me? Nowhere to be found. Because Jelani Dostris, Nostradamus, whatever you want to call me, I call what was going to happen. And I'm trying to tell you that's what's going to happen. Calvin Ridley is going to outdo Michael Thomas. I said it here. And as I said in my show, book it. Put it down, write it, whatever you want to do. Take a picture of it. I know your audience members are listening. Yes, I said it. So, deal with it. Are you saying, are you saying I'll play Michael Thomas by yardage? Or are you going to say I'll play him and get you the W? Because you can have all the yards that you want, but are you going to get the W? Both. 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 <laughs> well, uh, well, it's a party, so if everybody want to uh, get down, come out at your boy. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. Okay, so Jelani basically threw out, like, he pretty much pegged the weaknesses, but Jelani, man, if, if you want to add anything to that, brother, tell us the weaknesses that you feel your Falcons can exploit on the Saints, the weaknesses on the Saints that you feel your Falcons can exploit to knock these guys off again on the season. What you got? I, I mean, where's Eli Apple? Where's that guy? Point him out. Put him out there. Look for him. Eli Apple is going to get targeted. Like, he always gets targeted. I mean, I think Colin would agree, you know, with that. You know, we, we, we talk, but I think he would he would agree with that. Expo- exploit him. And I would even say go after Marcus Lattimore because he's coming off an injury. Let's just see how healthy he is. See how it's good. Sometimes when you stay awake, you, you, you're helping out. Trade lightly, trade lightly, young man. Trade lightly, young man. The dude is hungry. He's hungry, and it's gobble gobble day. You don't bite on too much that you can chew. Yeah, he can. He can, and he can eat all these yardage that that we're gonna put. On. So I'm saying attack Marshawn Lattimore, and, and if you do exactly what. Now, follow me here. Follow me. Follow me here. Follow me here. Follow me here. Kyle, hold on. Follow me here. 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 What what happens when one guy goes out and then his replacement comes in? Or if it's a rookie. You you target that because you see you see a weakness. You see you see something that you might can exploit. He's hurt. We don't know if he's he's not 100%. So you attack him. Let's see how healthy he really is. Because if you start going to the other side and you stay away from him, then you're playing it to their end. So, Marcus Lattimore, let's see how healthy you are. You come, I mean, Marshawn Lattimore, I'm sorry. Tell him. All I'm trying to say is, Jelani, Jelani, all I'm trying to say is, man, me and you have been doing this for a few years. All I want you to do is, you're the sports guy. You, you're more into this than me, man. I want you to give me, you give me, you give me logic, you're not giving me stats, you give me more of what your heart is saying. Like, listen, I understand what you mean that, you know, off the score, off the, you know, the uh, rookie, uh, someone that's not warm off the bench, you know, you change the three, things are different. I got that. You take advantage of your mix, man. But listen, Jelani, just, just think about it in, in simple terms. The self-catch in the Saints that beat us, we, the, the world knows you beat us. 
And I'm giving you all the credit. But do you honestly think it's going to happen twice in a row? The same way July is come on. No, 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 I never said it would happen the same way. So if you're asking me if I think the Falcons are going to hold them to nine points once again, no. I, I agree with you. That. I don't think that's going to happen. But are they going to be putting up? Because uh, if I remember right, they're averaging uh, almost 30 points a game. No, they're not going to get to 30. I will, I will give them 21, but they're not getting right. 30. Man, it don't matter how many points you give us, we're going to take what we want. we take taking what we want. And, and yeah, Ernest and Jelani, that that all that. Stuff, I, I, yeah, that's cool. Ernest and Jelani, man, I love the robbery. I love, what you, I love the uh, stuff that you put out, man, every week. I, I love what you're doing, man. But listen, all I want you to know is that you talking about Davenport, you talking about Camilla, you talking about King Bob, you talking about Drew, you talking about the vessels, the, all the nucleus to this well all specimen of a team, nine and two, you don't get that by mistake. And one of the losses was because Drew Brees hurt himself. That was to, uh, was to y'all. I'm not even calling it a fluke, it was to y'all. Y'all beat the same square. So if you feel like any sports caster, any journalist, any podcaster across America that's listening right now, including yourself, Larry B, know for the fact that the Falcons will have a lot to go on Thursday. And I'm not talking about Thanksgiving spread. Drew Brees is back. He's in motion. Camilla's getting his swing. He's rounding back. And let's talk about Latavius Murray. This dude is actually, this dude carried the team while Camilla was out. And they can't go Mike. He's, he's on track to break records. 10 to a game, over 12 yards already. Man, come on, man. You, this, you, if you were stopping people that easily, Jelani, you would have more than three wins. Let's, let, 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 let numbers speak for numbers. Y'all will not win. How are you supposed to win? How many weeks? Who that? How many? Who that? Who that said they're going to beat them Saints? Nobody. Um, who said, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Drew Brees, uh, didn't he come back early? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Just answer the question. Just answer the question. Did he, did he, did he come back? What's happening? Did he come back? What's happening? He was supposed to come back after the bye. Six to eight. Did he come back early? Did he, he come back early? He started having up, up, he started having up on the sixth month closer to the sixth week than the eighth week, and it proved. He, he proved himself. So, so, so he came, he came back. back. He came back doctor, early. Doctor, listen, doctors say, the doctors say sometimes it takes a week to two weeks to get the flu. But you go to work in three days because you got to do what you got to do, right? You, you have a Did he, did he come back early? No, no, no. Ask me the question. Did he, did he come back? Did he come back early? No, he did not. Because it was six to eight weeks. He came back on the six. That, Larry B. That would be early. Six to eight weeks. So coming back at six weeks will actually be early than eight weeks. So he came back. No. Early. Now people, 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 people question, question that. People question that, and then when they question that, he came out there. He played. He didn't play his regular Drew Brees, but he played well. And what happened? They won the game. Then he had a week to, to, uh, for the bye. Came out of that, so he's healthy. He's ready to go. He's back. Cause now he's at his eight weeks. He's at his full, you know, time that they said it could. Like you just said, six to eight weeks. And he came back, and what happened? Be down, right? So, like you just said, yeah, that's, be down. That's good. That's good. Right. Yes, I'm not. I'm not saying away from that. Right. So, why would it be any different? It's not like it's not like he was just coming back, and then you can say, and you didn't. I'm giving you credit. It, you know, it's not like you can just say, "Hey, well, we didn't have Drew Brees or whatever," because you had Teddy B. Teddy B. won all your games. Why would it be? 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 Why would it be Listen, we're not doing that. You just said hey, we're going to live in the now. You said records don't matter with this robbery. We agree to that. You said we're going to live in this moment the now. We're not talking about Teddy B's father. We're not talking about Drew Brees coming back. We're talking about now. You, you, we, I gave you a part of that beat us. We're talking about Turkey. Let's keep yeah, it I am. I am talking about now. So why would it be any different than before? So why would it be any different than now? It's the same, the same people, the same people will be playing. 
Did you not? Like, okay, what, I'm what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at, Colin, what I'm getting at, let me tell you what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is, is that this game is no different than the game that was, what, two, three weeks ago. So that's why I'm still talking about the now. There is nobody that will be in this game that wasn't in the game previously. Devontae Freeman, he's practicing. He should be playing. Well, Hooper. Hooper's the only person. But regardless, pretty much 95% of the people that played in that game playing in this game. Hey, 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 first off, don't watch your mouth. Watch your, watch your mouth off the Hooper. Because last time I checked, uh, the top three, top three tight ends in the league. Go check it. If you want numbers, you want you talking about numbers, top three. Hey, when you down third, when you down about third and all you can do is throw the ball. I'll put up number two. Now, now, you know, oh, it, it, here we go. You got Garbage, Garbage, um, Garbage, Garbage, Chicago, all the states. He ain't doing anything. You know what? In the, uh, then I can say the same thing about your defense then. You always talking about all this Cam Jordan and all this stuff and all that. Well, if, if you're up, then you make the team one dimensional and, they, and you know that they pass and then you can pin your ears back. So, yeah, of course. Wait till y'all come on, man. Hey, you just, you just, you just missed my point, Colin. You, you said that when we're down and we and we have to pass to get back in, then yeah, you're basically saying empty numbers. I'm saying if you guys made a team one dimensional and you're talking about your defense and you know they have to pass, then those are empty numbers. Well. Not why it's a balanced, balanced game. And my point, and my point, the Celtics ain't another team that we saved in a dime. And we put y'all in one dimension. I mean, you got to get back to the drawing board of trends and do what you got to do. I gave you a problem last time. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to keep saying I gave you a problem because you don't, you don't deserve to act with this three wins at this time of the season. If you're a top team, top three tight end, if you're a top three tight end, you should have a top quarterback, top running back, top defense, and you'll be running the league. Man, come on, man. Jelani, I tell you, I give you a problem with Curtis Duke. And what did I say from the very beginning? Records don't mean it's anything all, in this rivalry. It's all, it's all good, like records, records don't it's mean all anything good. in this rivalry. You know, you it's know that. It's, 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 the, the history of this rivalry, the history of this rivalry has been, y'all have had seasons where y'all have had good seasons, and we come in, we bust y'all in the mouth, and then we have had seasons where we've had uh, the upper hand as far as record-wise, and y'all came in and busted us in the mouth. That's why I said records. Oh, and like I said, Jelani, we got we got about five or six big buses coming up down all the way up that right now on a um, on a, a bus ride going coming to the game. We gonna terrorize the Mercedes Benz Stadium, not the dome, the stadium. And listen, everybody, you know what? Seven o'clock, whatever it is, we play. I'm gonna just tell you, pass the dressing, please. Pass, pass the green bean casserole. You know, pass the cranberry sauce. Whatever you want, to pass, man. I'll be waiting for it. And don't forget about the gravy on my mashed potatoes, man. And I like my gumbo spicy, dog. So I need all the seasoning. We got you, baby. Are you ready for some football? Thursday football, turkey day, falcon day, deep fried stuff, turkey, stuff falcon. Who that is coming to the ATL? And if you want to party, we gonna sit around all the way back to Hatchin, all the way to Nola, baby. We gonna dance like you're 1995. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, so let's get on to the final round. I'm loving this, y'all. Final round, let's get into it, y'all. And this, of course, is the game plan. Here we go. Colum. You're the away team once again. Let us know, brother. Tell us your game plan for these guys, man. Um, All right, man. Let me make it short and sweet. I'm getting close. Let's start on time. So make it short and sweet. We gonna go to ATL. We we start the fans. We hit hard. We expect a lot of Camilla. Mike Thomas to start off, so we can feel the pace of this game. Then we gonna cruise on out. I mean, at halftime, it's going to, the halftime is gonna be a close game going to halftime. And then that third quarter, we gonna just put our you know put our foot to the pedal, and we gonna shut them out. I mean, it's gonna be one, 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 pass, 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 and then just smash them, smash them. It's gonna be it's gonna be one dimension. On July, all they're gonna be able to do is try to blitz, and that's gonna be that's not gonna work this week. Our um, pass protection is gonna be great. Camaro and um, Mother's gonna do great out the backfield, and it's just open that can't guard Mike, can't stop Mike. Sorry, and like I told you, that, um, Jared Cook is gonna benefit from that. So it looks for him to have over plus hundred yards on this week. 
On this third coming Thursday, yes. Over 100 for Jared Cook, yes. He's been missing a couple balls. Um, just enough to miss time with him and Drew across the middle the last few weeks. And I think he's going to benefit this week from the pass blocking and our run attack. And let me tell you something, man. We're going to carve it up like the man said it. And we're going to eat it, eat it, have a good old time, man. And we're going to bless the food and we're going to say amen. Oh, my gosh. Colum, final score. 34, 34 20. Thanks. Oh my, 14 point game. Jelani, first things first, I want you to start off with your response to Colum's game plan. Whether you think it's a good game plan or not, it's not going to happen. And then you can go ahead and finish it off with your game plan for the Falcons to defeat these Saints and uh, give us your final score if you would like. Well, I'm going to help Colum to make this quick uh, in response. <laughs> No, it's not going to happen. So, let's move on to what I was going to talk about and how we're going to win this game. Uh, it is, I'll be honest, our running game is horrible. So, it is going to be by the pass. It is going to be an air raid, but we will get Devontae Freeman back. We will have him in the passing game. We will use him to stretch the field. Well, it's not stretch the field, but stretch the play. So, long uh, running plays, as we should say. So, uh, sweeps, toss sweeps, uh, bubble screens, anything to get him out in the open and utilize him, get quick twitch, you know, that he can do, getting in and out of the breaks. So, not just running face to face or straight on into the defense. That's not going to be the strength, you know, of the Falcons. So, utilizing running backs, utilizing your tight ends. Uh, for, for quick passes, and then obviously over the top, we're going to go with Calvin Ridley, and Julio's going to work over the middle. So, air raid, air raid, air raid. So, all I'm going to say is, this is how it's going to go down, okay? This, 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 this is simple. Hey, man, hey, man, let's... No, 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 this is simple. This is simple. We got the W last time. I just beat... Column in the fantasy football league, and I got the W then. Oh. And we're gonna get this W Thursday, and it's gonna be WWW. And I'm not talking about the internet. At least that game, at least that game, you did get me, but it's all good. I'm gonna get my revenge game. The revenge on Thursday, man. Hey, Larry, not me, cut the shot man. I need a W on Thursday, man. Oh, that's a 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 man. Oh, uh, final score. I'm gonna go twenty-seven seventeen. Twenty-seven seventeen. All righty. I uh, know he's going with the Falcons. You got, got Kyle over here going with his Saints, ladies and gentlemen. This, this debate was supposed to be a little bit later. Okay, so both. I mean, they still have an hour and fifty-two minutes apparently uh, before before the voting polls up. Uh, but hey, like I said, they had to do it earlier for time constraints. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for voting. And I cannot believe it is this lopsided. Ladies and gentlemen, with 75% of the votes, you, the listeners, are going with the New Orleans Saints to win this thing on the road. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? I'm oh my! Larry B, uh, first off, your audience members have been eighty percent wrong any time I've been <laughs> on this, so that's why I'm not even worried about it. You know, hey, man, we would we would just we would just prove. Like, I, I, I I do got your number. I do got your number. I, and, 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 and I tell you what, I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna be able to I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to call you, but. I, I, I won't be able to call you, but I sure enough will text you. I will send you That's pictures right. because I will be in the building and I will That's take right. video footage of your That's right. who that nation or whoever they are walking out with it. We're going to post it on Twitter. Like, like Deion said, you ball, you get the call. And this team, mm-hmm. you get the text. I'm looking forward to it, man. Who that? Hey, I'm it's coming. Up. Hey, I just, it's coming. Hey, Lab, I know I know I'm rushing, Lab. I got to go in church. So I'm going to sign off right quick. I'm going to sign off. You know, um... Hey, everybody listening, man. I thank y'all for listening tonight. Just learned that's my boy. There is my bro. I miss everybody. But I'll be back on the show um, as time for Mitch, you know, working everything. But um, y'all know to find me on, on Facebook and Twitter. 
Fat Mac underscore key. That's F E C M A C underscore key. Feet and trials make a Christian. Chopping hands and loving hearts make the world a better place. And I got one thing to tell you, baby. Who <laughs> I'm loving it. Hey, I'll tell you something. Thank you so much, Colin. Hey, brother, take you. Have your wonderful evening, man. God bless you. Have a and you bless you with your family. Have a wonderful night at evening at church, good sir. And we'll see you next time, man. Yes, sir, man. Much love to you, man. Hey, much love, Jelani. All right, Colin. All right, listeners. Y'all have a good night, listeners. Hey, y'all tune. Continue tune into the show, man. And have a great work. Hey. Happy Turkey Day, gobble gobble, people. Peace. Peace. All right, Jelani. Hey, man. He's going to say the same to you, brother. Thank you so much for being on tonight's show, man. Please tell all the listeners, please, we got a good chat room going tonight. Let these people know where to find the realest, probably one of the best damn podcasts I have ever had the privilege of listening to in my entire life. Jelani, please, man, let these cats know where they can find not just your show, your website, all of the amazing things you do, man. I mean, I'm not even going to say it. If you're going to do it again this year, you already know what I'm talking about. Please let me know if you're going to do it again. Announce it right here on the show. I'm so excited to play that drop again. If this is what you're going to do, let's get more people involved. Let's get this thing going. Jelani, man, you're, you're, you're one of the best, man. So please do me a big favor. Do your thing, man. Man, Larry V, you are in my head, man. You are reading my mind. So, uh, the Wait a Minute Show dot com, the Wait a Minute Show dot com. You can go there, uh, and when you go on there, you'll see uh, Twitter and Facebook, and you can just click on the icon to follow us there. Uh, the Wait a Minute Show dot com also has all of the episodes that we do, uh, and and once when you go in there, you click on episodes, you can actually follow the show. Uh, if you want to, it'd be great. Create yourself a profile, but they probably already do since they listen to IE Sports. Uh, but you can follow us there through Spreaker and and get notifications every time the show goes live. So you can jump in. Larry B will uh, tell you that you know I like to keep it interactive, uh, reading your chats and, and responding to them while the show is going on uh, live. But even if it's not there, we are on Spotify. We are on. Uh, iTunes uh, as well, so you can catch the show there if there are other platforms that uh, you want to use. And like Larry B just said, uh, because I got the last piece of the puzzle that I needed um, today, so uh, I'm going to try and work on it tonight. If not tonight, definitely tomorrow. Uh, x Hard Radio Network, I'll be on there as well doing a show tomorrow, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I forgot the Wait a Minute show. Uh, on dot com, we go on Saturday at 8 p.m. as well, Eastern Standard Time. But the Wait a Minute Show Toy Drive is about to kick off. Uh, and uh, for those who don't know about this, uh, to give a real brief thing on it, it's something we've been doing for a few years now. Uh, we've been able to get bigger and bigger and bigger uh, over the over the time. Um, it's basically raising money through donations to help out kids during the holiday season to put a smile on their face. And last year, we were able to take care of 80 kids uh, through through that uh, toy drive. And it was anything and everything, uh, kids of all ages. Uh, we sent them to, to Hawks games here where uh, I, I still can't believe this Larry B to, to this day of uh, how we did it, but um, sent the family and the kids to, to a Hawks game. Uh, and they got a meet and greet with Dwayne Wade, Hall of Famer oh Dwayne Wade. God. So, you know, those are the things that, you know, we're just trying to do, you know, for kids around here to put a smile on their on their face. And that's what we're going to try and do uh, once again uh, this year. So uh, we'll be uh, doing that, launching it. And, and you'll see on the website, it'll have a GoFundMe button. It'll have a PayPal button. It'll have uh, a cash out button. You know, have a way, you know, or if you got something else and you still want to donate, because I know some people may have like a demo and all that stuff, you can email us at the wait a minute show, uh, at gmail.com and, and we can still link up, you know, that way. But very fun show, man. We love having fun. We love, you know, being positive and, and just like Colin. You know, um, I'm going to sign off, and and I always say this at the end of my show, and I'm going to say this to everyone. Uh, I appreciate the time. Um, Larry D is the man, so I, I 
always thank him for the opportunity to come out here uh, to, to use my voice and share my voice. And, you know, we have fun. But um, two things as always. I always tell people this. Just stay positive and push forward. And I'm going to head on out, Larry B. I appreciate it. Hey, man. Two beautiful messages. Once again, the applause button has been hit. Jelani J.B. Bodie. Hey, brother. I just want to tell you this is an amazing thing you're doing. Please, everybody, check out the Wait a Minute show. You heard all the info of how to get there. And please, participate in the 12 Drive this year. My first year participating in it now that i got a good, steady job. Trust me, man. I'm excited for that. That is a beautiful thing you're doing, man. And I guess I can't wait to actually this year not just promote it, but to be a part of it and to give as well. And, hey, y'all, anything helps. Trust me, anything. A few dollars, anything helps, man. So uh, Anything. When I, yes, Larry, you're exactly right. When I say anything, I literally mean anything because everything adds up. And and the way that we do it is that, you know, we, we find, we, we, we don't go out and get, you know, a Hot Wheel car for 50 cents. You know, we are getting kids Xboxes. We are getting kids TVs. We are getting kids bikes. We are getting, you know, but we find the value. We find the discounts and we utilize it. So that dollar, that $2, it all adds up and to give you something for a kid. I'm sorry to cut you off, but you, you're exactly right. Any amount helps for the cause. Well, you are absolutely correct there, Jelani. And hey, man, it's all good, brother. So hey, man, I know you got to bounce, man. It's been a long one. That was a lot of fun, though. Thanks again for lending us your time. And hey, man, I'm looking forward to tweeting with you on Thanksgiving. Looking forward to hearing the show tomorrow, man. I'll be doing mine as well again. But as soon as I'm finished, man, I can't wait to jump on over there. Man, I get back to promoting you and everything. It's craziness and everything and even a little bit of laziness on Twitter. So I got to get back on it, man. So thank you so much again for you being on here, for the opportunities you create for everybody, man. God bless you and your family. Have a beautiful, wonderful Thanksgiving man i'll talk to you very soon all right you too all right take care Yolani. all right y'all with that said once again was that not awesome ladies and gentlemen callum reynolds and jelani jb Bodie. That is truly amazing. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, please, <laughs> if you find it, you know, if, if there's anything you can possibly give, I mean, hey, it, it's a beautiful cause and it, it's a beautiful, sorry, turn the light on real quick. <laughs> it's a beautiful cause and it's just a, a beautiful thing. It really is. So help out uh, in any way you can. And that goes for everybody else too. Hey, man, anybody's having a difficult time, if you got it, you know, hey, God comes in all shapes and forms. You know, that's what I believe and, and do your best. You know, to help others, and and that's just the you know it's the way I see things. You got you don't got to see them the way I do, but that's just the way I think. Uh, that's the way I see things. So anyway, with that said, we are all set. Uh, I mean, that was awesome. I mean, if y'all didn't enjoy that, I don't know. So with that said, we are about an hour into the show, and since we got a little mangled and everything here, this is what we're gonna do. So the next primetime face off is actually scheduled for the next 10 minutes um i mean uh okay i'm sorry it's, it's scheduled in uh actually in about 10 minutes so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna play ourselves the ie sports radio commercial so you can check out all of our shows and all the good stuff there yeah i know some <laughs> you know uh we gotta you know update a little bit of it but it's all good so i'm gonna play this thing and uh y'all enjoy it and with that said time for the first question of the thanksgiving t-shirt giveaway are y'all ready here we go so the first question is how did the sport of football get started on thanksgiving check it out y'all look it up let me know remember the first one the first person to get up in the chat room and put the answer the correct answer i'll let you know in the in the coming segment in the next prom time face off but let me know uh, and it has to be the correct answer, and you got to be the first one to post that correct answer. So if someone posts the wrong answer, well, then the next person who posts it and it's the right answer, well, then that's the first person to post the right answer. So that is the first question of the night. Remember, you got to get three of them, okay? got to get three um, in a row or have at least, well, not in a row, but three of the five. got to be the first person there. If not, we'll figure out another way, depending on who gets first or whatever. But remember, or, or, or here we go once again, the first question of the night, how did the sport of football get started on thanksgiving so a little hint who started playing on thanksgiving 
literally who, like anybody, not just, you know, I don't want to give it away, but, uh, (laughs) you'll see y'all. So who started the trend on Thanksgiving? And I'm talking about football in general. Okay. The one, one more hint doesn't have to be a professional. Uh Oh, did I say that? Anyway, we will be right back after this. You are listening to the 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of three and out right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Good evening, sports fans. This is me, your boy, Lay bringing you yet another action packed wall to wall episode of the defining moment right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's your boy Phil Robinson here at IE Sports Radio taking this moment to welcome you to storm down the lane on the Fast Break Show with me and my man Phil Jones right now. Hey everybody, it's the host of the Fastest Show on IE Sports Radio, Daryl Kinsey Jr. And I'm welcoming you to take a lap of the extra mile with me and my co-hosts Lolita Camello, Caitlin Seen, and Michael Ward as we go through all of the news and updates in NASCAR, Formula One, IndyCar, and more. That's the Extra Mile, Thursdays at 8 p.m. on IE Sports Radio. Hello, lovelies. Caitlin Seam here, host of Not What It Seems, where nothing is off limits and no sport is safe. On IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Two Wheels Wednesday with Matt White, taking you inside the pit lane of British Superbike, World Superbike, and the big one, MotoGP. Hey everyone, this is Felicia, the first lady of IE Sports Radio and one of your esteemed co-hosts of Ring Rambling Radio along with Martin Sandoval and Matt Petrushka for all of your wrestling news and talk from everything from WWE to Ring of Honor, All Elite Wrestling, New Japan, anything you like. Be sure to catch us right here on IE Sports Radio. Hey there hockey fans, this is Cal Henderson with Nico Green. And we are welcoming you to join us on the Neutral Zone, presented by IE Sports Radio, throughout, throughout the hockey season. Buddy, let me tell you, hockey's never been hotter, and neither has the Neutral Zone. You definitely don't want to miss it, so tune in to YouTube.com, IE Sports Radio, or IESportsRadio.com for all things that are hot. Hey everyone, this is your boy Phil Jones, co-host of the Unfiltered Truth with Phil Robbins in the third. Every Monday, 3.30, 6.30, and Tuesday, 5.30, 8.30. On IE Sports Radio, we're here to give you guys nothing but greater news, breakdowns of both sides of the game, and interviews with active and former players and NFL analysts, because we are here to give you nothing but the unfiltered truth. We want you guys to get the real stuff. So join us every Monday night and Tuesday night on IE Sports Radio. What's going on, football fans? This is me, your boy, Larry, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here on IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head-to-head primetime face-offs each week. You don't want to miss it. You love racing, and we love racing. So join myself, Lolita Camello, with my co-hosts, Daryl Kinsey Jr., Caitlin C., and Michael Ward as we talk racing on the Extra Mile here every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on the IE Sports Radio Network, your direct feed for all that is sports. Oh, yeah, if you're a fan of professional wrestling, if you're a fan of WWE, if you're a fan of all elite wrestling, if you're a fan of the sport of professional wrestling, you're in the right place. Hello, I am the Soul Cal Saint, Martin Sandoval, coming to you live with Ring Rambling Radio, along with the first lady of IE Sports Radio, Felicia, and my good brother, Matt Petreska. It's Ring Rambling Radio, part of IE Sports Radio. Dig it! Hello and welcome! To the Soccer Scoreboard Show with your host Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. 
Every week I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world. From the English Premier League to the World Cup to MLS, Liga MX and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Are you a big fan of baseball? Well then join us every Tuesday on the International Empire Sports Radio Network. I'm your host, Brandon Buckingham. I have my co-host, Karen Rodriguez, and Blake Henley. Join me every week when we will discuss the latest in sports. See you then. What's up, IE Sports Radio family? This is John Felipe, one half of the Brothers Blue, coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. You can catch me on any one of those shows on 3 and Out, on The Brothers Blue on YouTube, as well as IE Sports Radio, your home for all that is sports. Warning, warning, the following opinions are not sanctioned by IE Sports Radio. The truth is a beautiful thing. We would never twist it, nor will it ever be sugar-coated, so prepare yourself. I'm Phil Robinson, he's Phil Jones, and this is the unfiltered truth. Hello, this is Michael Ward from The Extra Mile, and you're listening to IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, IE Sports Radio family, this is your boy, Mr. Gumbo himself, Caleb Fat Mac Reynolds. What up? You know I'm part of the Defining Moment NBA segment and also 3 and out. Holla at your boy from the Big Easy all the way to your front door. This is IE Sports Radio, your home for all that is sports. Hey guys, it's Blake Henley, better known as H-Town Blake to some of you. Happy to announce that Bases Loader is back in full force. We'll be bringing that high heat every Tuesday night here on IE Sports Radio. So come home, get ready, dig into that batter's box, and see if you can chase that high heat, baby. So we'll be coming to you live with all the stats, all the rundowns, all the division rivalries, and every team that's going to make the playoff push to get to that one and only October and get to the pinnacle of what baseball is to hoist that commissioner's trophy when it's all said and done. This is your rope beast up, the good man. You can catch me each month alongside Vince Wright, sports governor in Minnesota, talking boxing on IE Sports Radio. Hello, sports fans. This is Mike Pat, co-host of 3 and Out NFL Edition, editor of the IE Sports Radio blog, diehard Redskins fan, alumni of the Florida State University, and all-around sports fanatic. Come check out my stuff and more on IE Sports Radio, your feed for all that is sports. Hey, this is your boy Phil Jones, also the host of the Fast Break Show with Phil Robinson III joining me as my sidekick as always. Look, we come at you guys every Friday night at 5 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern. Look, we give you guys all the latest NBA news from NCAA as well and the WNBA. We also let you guys know pre-game, injuries, whatever you need to know for basketball, for your fantasy league as well. So, look, y'all tune in for the Fast Break Show every Friday night at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Pacific. Hey, Eastman, on Ice Wars Radio. Y'all take care. What's good, everybody? My name is Taryn Rodriguez, co-host for Bases Loaded. You can catch me, Brandon Buckingham, and Blake Henley on Bases Loaded at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on IE Sports Radio. It's sure to be a grand slam. This is Matt Petreshko, one half of the Good Brothers of Ring Ramblin' Radio, with Martin Sandoval and Felicia Ruizrager. And you can catch us each month talking everything wrestling right here on IE Sports Radio, your home for all that is sports. Do you love college football? And do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all that is college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two? Division 1 AA in the FCS and Division 1 Single A in the FBS. Well then, look no further. Join myself, Larry B, and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on 3 and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
college football? And do you want to hear a college football show dedicated to all this college football, including junior college and the Triple CAA and the NJCAA, the NAIA, and the NCAA, including Division Three, Division Two, Division One AA in the FCS, and Division One Single A in the FBS? Well, then look no further. Join myself, Larry B., and my colleagues, Mr. H-Town Blake, Blake Henley, and Mr. Christian Espinoza, each week during the college football season for the latest in college football on Three and Out College Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. Green here reminding you to tune into the Neutral Zone Hockey Talk Radio Show Tuesdays 4 p.m. Pacific 7 Eastern proudly brought to you by IG Sports Radio. It's the Neutral Zone. All hockey, all the time. Take care. See you soon. Wednesday is the place to come for all your motorcycle sports news every Wednesday on IE Sports Radio with myself, Matt White. All the latest news, rumours, race reviews and previews from World and British City Bikes and the big one, MotoGP. Two Wheels Wednesday, every Wednesday on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Phil Robinson, running points, setting up Phil Jones for the finish. Join us every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, as we break down the week in basketball on the home for Real Talk Sports Radio, iesportsradio.com. Hi, I'm Brian McLaughlin. In the National Football League, there are approximately 17 million total fans. I'm Andrew Guzman. My Dallas Cowboys make up almost 9 million of those fans. And my Seahawks have a very loyal fan base of around 4 million. That's more than three quarters of all the fans. That's absolutely correct, Andrew. And on the Common Ground Football Podcast, we'll be talking about the good, bad, and ugly of these teams. We'll have weekly picks, discuss transactions, injuries. And we'll chat about the rest of the league, too. Blake freaking Bortles? Oh, yes. And Captain Andrew Luck. Excellent. What about Fitzmagic? Oh, let's not get carried away now. Oh, all right, then. Join us each week at CommonGroundFootballPodcast.com or wherever you get your podcast. It's going to be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me and hear me good. If you like sports, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like comedy, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like a different opinion coming from a different angle, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. So join me Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your host, Jelani J.B. Bodie, and of course, my man Lopan on the Wait a Minute Show.com. Ain't that right, Lopan? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The gentleman who was just on air a few minutes ago doing that amazing toy drive by way of the ATL and one of the most epic primetime face-offs you're probably ever going to hear. Of course, Jelani J.B. Bodie, that's him right there in the show, The Wait a Minute Show, and of course, Mr. Colin Reynolds, who just, those two just went at it, and I'm so happy that we were able to have them both on tonight's show. But... With that said, from two old school, from two old timers, if you will, Jelani is a veteran on the show, Colum is a part of the show, of course, and the iSports Radio family member, but 
from two uh, veterans, iSports Radio veterans, to two brand newcomers. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so dang excited for this next one because... These two ladies are, I mean, they're as cool as the other side of the pillow, I'm telling you. I just talked to them for the last couple of minutes, and I'm so excited to have them both here on the show tonight, and I know they're going to do an amazing job, and well, they're going to be representing two of the NFL's oldest franchises in the NFL, and of course, let's just say uh, they have a thing or two to do with the tradition of Thanksgiving football. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and get that tweet set up because it's coming at you, y'all. I am so excited for these two. Uh, one of them is an actual. One, one of them is really cool. How I met her, by the way, Julie. If you're listening, here's your girl. And uh, it, what do you call it? And for everybody else listening, well, be ready because you're going to enjoy this, y'all. So, first things first, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this thing underway. Prom Tom Face-Off, number two of the evening. We have, of course, the game that starts us out on Thanksgiving morning or afternoon, depending on where you are in the country or even, you know, north of the country. Gives you a hint of where one of them is from, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's get ready for Brown Tom face off number two. The Detroit Lions hosting the Chicago Bears. Let's get it. Alrighty, y'all. Let's get things started. Alright, so the tweet is all set and we are ready. I, I love, I just love putting these tweets out. They're so much fun to put out. I don't even care. Like, I love it. The tagging in and everything, it's, it's fun, okay? It's fun. It's really fun to put Bears 100 in one pride, okay? I don't even care. It's fun. So, don't judge me. With that said, I love these emojis, y'all. I really do. Like, I love these, if y'all can't tell. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Introducing the OA, t- or sorry, representing the OA team. She is, by way of Chicago, in the freezing cold, where it's also really windy, which is just not a really cool yet it is cool get it haha ha, whatever but which is not like <laughs> yeah, not the funnest place to be however however it does make for some great football because it is the home of the monsters of the midway ladies and gentlemen this woman knows a thing or two about football as she is a writer for our turf previously or formerly known as NFL female, which of course lots of you may know that lots of those ladies have been here on the show, including uh, Miss Marcella Vargas as well as Miss Julie Voigt. As a matter of fact, that's how I met this next, our next guest here, who I am already going to tell is, is, she's going to be awesome, and hopefully she's on the show for many, many more times. Ladies and gentlemen, once again representing the Chicago Bears, she is a reporter for the Chicago Bears through our turf and overall diehard Bears fan. And ladies and gentlemen, welcoming for her first time and hopefully first of many, the one and only Miss Wanda. How's it going, Wanda? Hey. <laughs> Woo, that is probably the best intro in my entire life. <laughs> Even better than that was awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, with that said, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you. I mean, wouldn't that be cool if you could like have that kind of introduction for like when you walk into work or something? Like, wouldn't that be cool? Like, that would be great. I mean, that should be like an everyday thing. Shoot, that should be when I walk through the door in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like that should be given. I, I I've got to. I'm gonna make my husband and my kids listen to this. This is what you need to be doing every single day. <laughs> this is great. Well, if they are, well, when they do listen, uh, big shout out to your husband and your children, Swanda. So that is awesome. <laughs> and um, with that said, let's roll on in now to the home team. Uh oh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. representing the home team. Uh, that's right, she is a fan of that baby blue and silver. And this week they have no decals in their helmet. It's a tradition. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the east. I mean, the Far East, by way of Ontario, Canada. That's right. We have a Canadian on the air. And she is 
And <laughs> she is a Detroit Lions fan of over 50 years. Ladies and gentlemen, she is every bit of the diehard that you can even imagine. I strive to be a diehard like this one day of this magnitude. Ladies and gentlemen, welcoming for her first time here. And as the same as Wanda, hopefully as hopefully many, many more to come. Ladies and gentlemen, a diehard Detroit Lions fan. Welcoming the one, the only, Miss Adina, how's it going, Adina? How are you doing tonight? I am great. That was awesome. Thank you so much. You're, you're <laughs> I'm great. hyped. Right? See? That's got to have that. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm so glad you could have that. So, Okay, well, with that said, everyone and their mother is trying to answer the question right now inside of the chat room, and I think oh, I think somebody got it, and it's a giant answer. Oh, my gosh. Once again, for the IE Sports Radio t-shirt giveaway, give me, I want the first question of the night, give me, how did football on Thanksgiving start? How did it start? Literally, how did it start? It doesn't necessarily have to be the NFL. How did football on Thanksgiving start? Who used to play it traditionally on Thanksgiving? Let us know in the chat room. You will get one point of... Remember, there's five questions tonight. Okay? As a matter of fact, before we get into the next primetime face-off, I'm going to give you guys a second question right now so you can get ready before we get the primetime face-off going. Second question of the night. Listen up, y'all. It's the second question of the night, everybody in the chat room. So, next question. I want to know most sacks on Thanksgiving and how many and what year. Who got the most sacks in a Thanksgiving football game? What year was it and what player? Let me know in the chat room. Once again, the first right answer will get will we'll get we'll earn the point towards the free shirt. T-shirt giveaway tonight, y'all. IE Sports Radio T-shirt giveaway tonight. So, alrighty, here we go. These ladies are ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's get it, y'all. Here we go. So, first things first. Ladies, you will have one minute on the clock. I want to know X Factors. I love X Factors. You love X Factors. We love X Factors, all right? I tried to make that like the ice cream thing, but it didn't work. I failed miserably. Anyway, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's start things off here. Miss Wanda, you are the away yeah. team. Give us some X Factors. Give us any X Factors you would like to. It could be... One player, two players, three players, an entire side of the ball, one part of that side, quarterbacks, receiving core, uh, running back tandem, running backs, offensive line, defensive line, uh, linebackers, DBs, coaching staff, fans on the road. I know the home field advantage is, you know, to Detroit. They got the home, definitely have the home fans for you guys. But with that said, Miss Wanda, you have one minute on the clock. Give us your X Factors for Thursday night's game or Thursday afternoon's game. Okay, so the, my X Factor is going to be the entire Bears defense uh, to bring back that Monsters of the Midway. Thanksgiving, they're going to ball out uh, after last weekend against the Giants. They got a taste of it. I think they're going to be able to do the same thing, pressure on whoever the Lions quarterback is going to be. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to play it of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to put it out there. They're, they're going to. Is Khalil Mack is going to be on the attack. He's going to put pressure, and uh, it's, it's going to be uh, interesting. And I'm expecting a couple of interceptions as well. So uh, the X factor is definitely going to be the Bears defense. Well, in perfect timing, Ms. Wanda. You were, you were under 44 seconds, 45 seconds actually, right there, 45 seconds. But yeah, me as a diehard yet realistic and not liked very much by the rest of the fan base, Raiders fan. Uh, yeah, let's just say I miss Khalil Mack. So, anyway, uh, with that said, okay, so good X-Factors there. I like our good X-Factor there. I always say with Raquan Smith and Khalil Mack on one defense, how can you not be dominant? But I guess it takes more than two. <laughs> but anyway, with that said, all right, Miss Adina, you heard her. So those are her X factors. I want to know your X factors. You can, of course, it could be anything, which I just mentioned. And, and also, you guys have home field advantage. So if that's the case, let us know. If not, you have one minute on the clock. Let us know your X factors for Thursday's Thanksgiving game. Well, first of all, I would say the X factor for us is going to be the home field advantage. Um, we do really well, although our, our uh, our uh, win to loss ratio right now is not that great. Um, we do seem to get uh, 
do a really good job in the Thanksgiving games. So I'm hoping that that's going to, that tradition is going to uh, go forward. Um, I do believe, though, that um, our X Factor is going to be feeding Galladay um, early in the game and establish our run game early with uh, Bo Scarborough, who has been doing, was been balling. Um, now, the question is, because we all know, um, our quarterback situation, because we all know that Stafford is out um, and uh, Drixel is on the injury list. So uh, there may be a third uh, component to our quarterback situation. So um, that's going to be an issue. But uh, you know what? We're going to uh, just uh, do our best. And uh, I, but I believe uh, Scarborough and Galladay are going to be our X Factors. Scarborough is a beast. Uh, the, the Bama man himself. And yeah, mm-hmm. how can anybody forget Galladay? Kenny Galladay is a freaking beast. So absolutely. Okay, so yeah. I love it because, ladies and gentlemen, you can already see where this is going. This is, I love it. Wanda's going with the Monsters of the Midway, literally, the defense. And and I love it because Adina's going with the offense. So when it comes down to it, there, these two ladies, by their comments so far, are pretty much going in the in the direction of it's going to be Detroit's offense versus Chicago's defense. So I like it already. This is good stuff, y'all. So okay, let's start it off now. Uh, let's continue on with the next round, so the lightning round. Let's get back and forth and have some fun here with weaknesses. That's right, y'all. This is always a fun one, uh, especially if you heard the last primetime base off a little bit ago between Jelani and Kyle. Oh my gosh, that was funny, but and fun. But let's get into it. Wanda, you start us off yet again, and let us know who, (laughs) you start us off yet again, and let us know the weaknesses that you think your bears can uh, exploit on the line. You have one minute on the clock. Begin. Um, well, this, this is going to be because, it's going to be kind of hard because of the way that our offense is played, but I think we can expose the defense is weakness of the Lions, and it's either going to be on the ground or in the air, but uh, the way that it, should, it looks, if we can get a balanced offense, we can expose the Lions' defense pretty well and get through to the line. Now, whether or not that's going to put up a lot of points, I don't know if anybody's guess when it comes to Trubisky, but I'm going to say, yes, he's actually going to have a, a, a pretty good time throwing the ball down the field because of the Lions defense. Now they used to have a pretty good defense. I think it can work out a little bit more but I'm, I'm going to say yes, they're going to expose it. They're going to go through it and they're going to cut through and do what they need to do to be the offense and be uh, the team that I know they can be. The way they played last week uh, against the Giants Gave them a little bit, and the fact that uh, we now have a lot more tape of Driscoll if he plays, that'll be a plus match. <laughs> oh my gosh! But, but with whoever the QB is, if it's not Driscoll, we don't have tape, so that's going to be a guessing game. So if we have Driscoll, we know how he plays now. We've done advantage. Adina, let me go ahead and translate that really nice, nice way of putting it. <laughs> Adina, Wanda says that. Your quarterback sucks. And she also says that your defense freaking sucks. Okay, I, yeah, I explained it. That's right, I said it. You said, anyway, it's the instigator, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, with that said, Miss Adina, you have 30 seconds on the clock. Defend your team. Okay. So, yes, um, we have, have had some issues um, in the last couple of games and stuff like that. And, um, but, um, I basically, I think we're gonna. I think our team is gonna show up. It's uh, it's about time. Uh, it's our. It, this is this is gonna be our game. I, I I truly believe that we are going to pressure Trubinsky because I think that's uh, where we need to. We are going to put a lot of pressure on him, and uh, and hopefully um, he's going to not have a good game. We want to um, really. Uh, pressure him and uh, put that pressure on uh, on his line, and uh, hopefully he makes him safe, and hopefully he turns over the ball, and hopefully Slay has a, an amazing game because he's due. He's way overdue. Big Slay is way overdue for some good uh, 
Take me out. Even a pick six would be nice right about now. I would love that on Thursday. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I love it because, ladies and gentlemen, Miss, Miss Adina, she didn't even, like, th- that's that's supposed to be the the defense part, however, because you're supposed to, you know, say either, like, you know, defend the fact that that won't happen, uh, or maybe it will if you agree with it, um, with, with what Wanda said, but I love it because you went straight for the weakness and just, like, surpassed that, so that was pretty cool, so. I went from a jugular. I you did. Like, you really did so. We are lying. With that We are lying. We go for the juggler. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could say that, yes, if it was Matt Stafford, absolutely, hands down, he could probably, like, rip us open in, on Thanksgiving. But because it's not a Matt Stafford, I think we have a better advantage. Slay shows up. He might. He might show up, but they're going to have something else. It's either going to be some high flying balls out there. He's going to just throw it down there. Trubisky's taking a lot of chances now, and I think he's got too big of a chip on his shoulder right now to let it just fall apart on Thanksgiving. So I think it's going to play out. I love it. Well, I don't know. I don't know. This one to defend your team. (laughs) <laughs> I seriously think that we're going to uh, pressure Trubinsky. I really think it, and he's going to not like it, and he's going to not have the greatest game. I truly believe our defense is going to show up this game. Okay, well, I like it. Cause I, I mean, you, I like it. You got you ladies just said screw the the the, uh, the defending my team. I'm going for their team. So you're offensive as can be, you're right? Going for the juggler. I love it. So, okay, last but not least, we're gonna get in to the fire round. This one's always fun because this is the game plan. Now, you, you will have Wanda will start us off yet again. Once again, she is the away team. So how it'll go is Wanda will get a minute. Um, tell us your game plan that you feel that you you know feel your Bears have to do to beat these Lions on Thanksgiving on their field. And after that, you get thirty seconds, Adina, to either agree with her game plan, like you know what, if I was playing the Lions, that's a good idea, or no, not gonna happen. No, it's just not. That's not how it's gonna go down. Uh, and after that. Um, It'll be flip-flopped, Adina. Then you tell us your game plan for your Lions to defeat these Bears at home on Thanksgiving. And then we will end it with, Wanda, your 30 seconds of, okay, you know what, that's actually a pretty good game plan against us. Or, no, not going to happen. And after all that's said and done, we'll go to the voting poll and see what the listeners thought. Once again, listeners, if you are you know listening right now, go ahead and get on over to the IE Sports Radio page. Well, the IE Sports Radio Twitter page. Scroll down, find this voting poll, and let us know who you think is going to win it. we got a few minutes left here, I think, in the vote. In the voting polls, so cast your vote and let us know as these ladies talk about their game plans. So, uh, let's do this. So, Miss Wanda, you have one minute on the clock. What is your game plan for these Bears to come away victorious on Thanksgiving? Okay, if the Bears do what I'm hoping that they do, Matt Nagy actually coaches the way that he should be coaching. Um, <laughs> it would be uh, a balanced offense with a run game and a, and a passing game but bounced enough to where uh, Mitchell Trubisky has a chance to do some of those two-minute drills, uh, do some RPOs that seem to be working for him. When he's outside of the pocket, he's phenomenal. When he's in the pocket, that seems to be a problem. So the offensive line has to step up, open holes, so that Montgomery can get through. Nall, who's another one that is our third stringer, is a big guy. He's going to be coming in. And you've got Tariq Cohen coming in. So all three of them into the run. Court Durrell Patterson, he's another secret weapon that is a bulldozer. And using him a lot more against the Bears' offense going. Uh, defensively, special teams, special teams has to play out. Pinero has to kick the freaking ball in between <laughs> the post. And quit missing, just doing what he needs to do, get it out there. He's got all this ready to go. The defense doing the job, getting the ball back, giving the offense a chance, and the offense getting down, meticulously down the field, moving the chains so that they get some points on the board and stay ahead with the points. If they stay ahead, we have a chance. If they don't stay ahead and we start going back and forth, this isn't going to be the, the the wipeout game that it was before. They're not going to see what happened with uh, with the Ravens and the Rams last night. That's not going to be the case. It, uh, well, at least I hope not. But <laughs> I believe that, that the Bears are going to really do it if it's balanced. 
good play calling, good defensive play calling, good defense, good offense, special teams. It's got to be in all phases. All phases they can take the Lions at home and they can do this um, with a chip on their shoulders so much that all Bears fans are going to forget they've been hating all year. Oh my gosh. That was 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So, wow. Miss, Miss Adina, you have 2 minutes and 15 seconds. But, let us know. Miss Adina, what do you think? Do you think, you know what, okay, she's got a good point with the game plan there? Or no, not even. Stop it. Not Knock it off. Nonsense. You're delusional. What do you think? You got 30 seconds to respond to that. Okay, basically, I'm going to be the Canadian here, and I'm going to be, like, neutral, even though I love my Lions. You have some very valid points. I, I cannot say that you don't. Um, but I believe that my team, the Detroit Lions, are going to uh, show up this Thursday. This is Thanksgiving. We are going to show up, and we're going to show people that, yes, we've had a rocky start or middle of the season or whatever, but we are going to come out, and we are going to... We're going to pressure Trubinsky because that's what we need to do. Um, you know, we're going to ball out um, offensively. We're going to run the game early. We're going to throw it to Galladay because that's what we need to do. Um, our special teams, uh, Prater, he's going to kick a few because that's what he does, Mr. Money. And um, we're going to prove to everyone that we can and we will beat the Chicago Bears on Thursday. Oh my gosh, she only, she combined all of that and that was literally in a minute. Like she just couldn't, she went like, I love it. You acknowledge the, the game plan. I love how you said the Canadian me neutral. That is hilarious. Uh, you're, 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 you crack me up. Oh my gosh, you crack me up. Sorry, I, not sorry. I love, I love Canadians. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are great. Great people. I'm telling you, man. This is awesome. So, okay. Well, with that said, Miss Wanda, you have 30 seconds. What do you think about her game plan? Do you, would you do this if you were against the Bears? I mean, what do you think? Or, nope, not going to happen. You're delusional. That's about that. Or are you going to be like an American Canadian and just be neutral? I don't know. Let, let us know. <laughs> Uh, well, I, you know, I do. In thirty seconds, I'm going to say it's it's a nice plan, but it's not a great plan. And it's no offense to you or to your Lions. Um, yeah, like I said before, if Stafford were playing, it would be a different story. But if Stafford's mm-hmm. not playing. I think the Bears have the edge, even though they're one and a half point underdogs in Vegas. I still think the Bears are going to take this. Because I think, like I said before, they've got a chip on their shoulders, and they're going to take it out on line on Thanksgiving. I love it. Well, ladies, that was awesome. One more time. Let me hit that applause button. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Wanda and Miss Adina. Wow. What? A, that was fun. These two went at it. That was a lot of fun. Ladies, ladies, I just want to say thank you so much for being on tonight's show for sure. We're not done with it yet. Okay? We're not, I mean, not, not like that. But we're not done just yet. So we thank you so much for that. But I just want to say really quick before, we're at it, before we get to the, the voting poll, while I'm getting over there, by the way, to the voting poll, on our IE Sports Radio page, uh, on our Twitter page. Uh, once again, if you have not gotten there yet, hurry up and cast your votes as much as fast as you can because we only have 11 minutes left and we're going to end this one kind of early uh, because, well, that's going to be the, the end of the segment. But I got to tell you, well, there's actually two minutes left. But I just got to say, this was a, this is a hard one for me because I got like some kind of a, of ties on both games and both teams. Uh, you know, as like I said, as a Raider fan, I got a soft spot for Khalil Mack. I'm a big fan of his. I wanted Roquan Smith on the Raiders defense. So I wanted this to be, you know, I wanted both those guys to be part of the Raiders defense, you know, uh, like a year or two ago. But is what it is. After that, I think it was a year, right? Because Raquan Smith has only been in for a year. It's the second year, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it was yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, is what it is. Um, but the Monsters of the Midway, definitely a good team. I'm a big fan of Ridley. Uh, I don't know why you guys don't use him more, but it is what it is. Uh, but I, I really just think that... You know, I, I, I got a soft spot for the defense. I'm a defensive guy, so I love lots of good defense. So the Bears, the Monsters of the Midway, uh, the Monsters of the Midway, big time defensive team. I love it. Um, and on top of that, I have a big soft spot for the Detroit Lions because I am a big Matt Patricia guy. Because um, uh. I am. I, I'm a big fan of his. Why? Because he's a defensive dude. My kind of football games are like, have you guys ever seen Leatherheads? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's my kind of football right there. Freaking six oh, to three. Of course. Baseball That's scores. Fun. I hate touchdowns. <laughs> touchdowns make me want to throw up. They're disgusting. I can't unless unless it's a scoop and score or a pick six. I don't like touchdowns. Okay, I just don't. Yeah, 
I just don't. So, so um, <laughs> uh, defense all day. So I love the NFC North because there's tons of great defense there. But I just got to tell you right now, uh, this is a tough one for me to pick. But the poll just ended, so let's get on into it, y'all. So with that said, all righty, here it goes. <clears throat> <clears throat> Drum roll, please. I know, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, with, this was a close one. Oh, this is going to be a good game. This, I think this is going to be just at the voting poll. You, Ladies and gentlemen, you, the listeners, once again, thank you to everybody who voted, you, the listeners, and with 55%, are going with the Detroit Lions to win this thing at home on Thanksgiving. What in the world? Serious? Come on, kids. That's what this is because the Bears fans are so dang jaded. Oh my God! It's awesome. Flying a river. Oh my gosh! I was not expecting that. <laughs> you know what? I have to tell you, as a as a diehard fan, you know, Lions fan, I did not expect that. I was expecting the I was expecting to see the Bears. I really was. Well, I'm loving it. I- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, look, both these teams, let's just be real. This is coming from a Raider fan whose team is not going to the playoffs because work is trash. Uh, let's be realistic. I don't think either of these teams are either. I'm sorry, ladies, don't hate me. But the Bears fell off. I don't know what the hell happened, but there is anything. But, I mean, I really hope something happens and they spark. But last year was amazing. This year, them and the Rams was hilarious because I was like, wow. Oh, I know. Like, last yeah. year, that, that game was amazing. And this year... Well, it- I'm telling you right now, the Bears defense broke Jared Goff. I mean... They broke it. They broke him last year, and because they broke him, he hasn't been the same since. Well, who broke yeah, who, who, who cracked the code, though? Who cracked the code for them? It was Patricia. Ever since they played, when they played us, after that, they saw, they started losing because Patricia cracked the code. No one could uh, lose against them, and then as soon as they played us, we lost. But uh, everyone now uh, thought, oh, this is how exactly. You we appreciate so, that because that's how yeah. us, and we just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the way, by the way, you got a cheerleader. Wanda's got a cheerleader because Julie just said, "Go, Wanda." <laughs> oh. Julie is originally from Chicago, so she grew up loving the Bears just as much, even though she's a Colts fan. So we have, you know, she she knows sweetness and so on. But come on, I cannot believe Julie loves her horses. She loves her ponies. Uh-uh. She does. She does. Love- <laughs> Those are her little ponies. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> and that team has more. Pro- they have problems of their own. But as I always say, no one has more teams than my Raiders. But more problems than my Raiders. My, my Raiders have more problems than the math book. I'm telling you, we're we're just we're yeah we're we're anyway anyway. So if it makes you ladies feel any better, we suck too. Okay, so so it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just Misery loves company. I mean, absolutely, we can hang out together. I'm down with that. All of us can just chill because we our teams are just not that good. So it's what it is. It is what it is. But ladies, I just want to say once again, thank you so much. So this is what we're gonna do. The last few minutes here, I just want to give y'all the time. So Miss Wanda, once again, you're the away team, so you go first. Please let everybody know. All we have listeners right now. The chat room is buzzing. I mean, let the listeners know. Let everybody know. Listening to, the, of course, this is the podcast as well so it's going to be it's recorded so it'll be on all the major podcast networks all over the place or our platforms on all the ones that we're on and everything so please let everybody know where they can find all of your work on our turf or any podcasts or anything anything you may do um involving you know sports and all that good stuff there and all of your publications and everything and please let us know of course let all these diehard bears fans know that we're cheering you on where to find you on twitter and of course uh, any other avenues that you would like to share where they can find you any blogs or anything like that the floor is yours awesome well i you can find me writing on our turf football um, I am the Bears reporter, and uh, I've been doing this for uh, a while. 
took a little sabbatical this year, but I will be back in it um, hardcore uh, next season. Um, and then I have also written a couple of pieces for, oh gosh, different uh, Bears Bar Room. I've written for uh, SI uh, Pro Football Girl. And uh, then you can find me on Twitter at uh, WandaW63. Um, big Bears fans, so you'll find me either tweeting about the Bears or knowing the game Irish because I love them too. So um, those are the uh, ones that I would be tweeting about mostly, but it's all sports because I love all sports. So. That's, That's about something. I love that. And by the way, oh my gosh, in the chat room, Julie says, Wanda, my sister from another mister. Wow. <laughs> you you <laughs> couldn't go true. back to the 80s more than that, Julie. I'm just kidding. You couldn't, back, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, you couldn't reach back further into the 1900s with that. I'm just playing. But that, that's pretty funny. That, that's hilarious. Well, that was awesome. And... Well, please go give Miss Wanda a follow. She is awesome. Check out all of her work. And Miss Adina, the, you know the same drill. Let us know. Let all these diehard Lions fans listening right now, and all the Canadians apparently, the proud, proud, what? the people you have made proud tonight in Canada. Let them know where they can follow you. I okay. I have to follow that. That's amazing. Good for you, Wanda. That's awesome. Thank I didn't you. know I was going up against like a reporter. I am just a lonely diehard uh, Detroit Lions fan that loves football and loves talking to my Twitter fam on uh, about Detroit Lions. So um, I appreciate you hanging with me. <laughs> hey, fifty five freaking percent. I don't know how. I don't even feel too bad. I think they felt sorry for me because I'm Canadian. You know, sorry, not sorry kind of thing. I don't know. (laughs) But uh, anyways, um, I, anybody can follow me. Um, I actually, I'm kind of impressed. I've uh, just just, uh, made 20, or just have 2,500 followers. And I just uh, celebrated that just a little while ago. So I'm kind of excited. (laughs) Little things amuse a little mind. Um, I, you can follow me at um, Adina Rainbird. Um, on Twitter, and um, I'm also on Instagram, and I am underscore Adina on uh, Instagram, and I, I tweet a lot about the Lions just because I love them since I was born, basically. My dad was a huge Lions fan, and uh, I just inherited the team, and uh, one day before I die, I would like to, uh, you know, make a, 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 a Super Bowl appearance and maybe possibly win. <laughs> well. So, yay. <laughs> Hey, I, I, that's a, that's you and a lot of us diehard fans. I totally understand you, Miss Adina. So, with that said, ladies, shake virtual hands. The applause button has been hit. You are both awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of tonight's show and for taking time out of your busy nights. I know it's y'all probably getting ready for Thanksgiving and the whole bit. By the way, um, Miss Adina, I know your Thanksgiving passed last month, but it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we we celebrate it as well. We watch football all, all day, so we love, we, go. we love, we do our Canadian Thanksgiving. We have two Thanksgivings. We have the Canadian Thanksgiving in October, and then in... Um, in November, we celebrate the American Thanksgiving by watching football all day. So that's, it's awesome. We appreciate that you are in November and we can do that. <laughs> See, that is pretty sweet, right? And then we got we also got the uh, the Grey Cup coming up. Yes. So yeah, it already it already um, it was already oh, wait it already happened. Yeah. That's I, right. It already. I'm happened. a bad Canadian. I love the NFL. I don't really watch the CFL. I have to say. I know it's bad. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> but I, I love the NFL. Oh That's gosh. just my topic tonight. So, so I apologize. We accept you. It's a, we do. We totally accept you with open arms. It's okay. We love y'all. Thanks, it's okay. Wanda. <laughs> you are awesome. So, ladies, with that said, thank you so much. I appreciate you both. Uh, once again, one more round of applause for these ladies. Once again, Wanda and Adina. Miss Wanda and Miss Adina. Thank you. you guys are awesome. Thanks Absolutely. for having me. You're very thank welcome. You. Good luck, Wanda, on Thursday and all the Chicago Bears fans. Good luck. We're going to catch you. Oh, thank well, you. Take care. I- I'll, I will be tagging you in the post. You have a wonderful day. I'll be tagging you on the Thanksgiving Day post so we can all tweet and have a good time, yeah? All right. Thank <laughs> so, you. Good, good night, Take ladies. Care. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 All right, y'all. Once again, Miss Adina and Miss Wanda, they were awesome. All right, so let's get to uh, one more question. And after we get to this question, we will go, of course, get on into the uh, our break, and then we'll get into our our uh, 
third and final primetime face-off of the evening. So, next question on the docket. So, we got uh, two already. Once again, how did football, the sport, the sport of football, um, get started on Thanksgiving? Okay, who started it? What do you know? Who started the tradition of football? Not you know. I, I'll just give you the hint. Okay, it wasn't the NFL. Uh, and um, the second question is uh, most sacks on Thanksgiving. How many in what year? Who got those sacks? How many of them in what year was it? And the third question is uh, where is it at? What was the final score? Or actually, no. When was the first NFL Thanksgiving game played? What was it? Or who was it between? And what was the score? So once again, I know I just messed that up. Sorry. But what was the first ever NFL football game ever played? Uh, who was it between? And what was the final score? So let us know. Okay. The year. Um, who, 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 was, who was between the year and the final score? So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and take ourselves. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, it's time for the third and final primetime face-off of the evening and some more questions and a little bit more football fun. Hopefully you're enjoying the show as much as I am because I know I certainly am tonight. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy and so proud to be doing this. So blessed and thankful for God giving me another day and thankful for just the amazing people in my life, including all of you. So with that said, stay tuned with a third and final primetime face-off coming up right after this. What up, all you boxing fans? This is Vince Wright, the sports governor, and me and Gilbert Batista are the host of Ringside on IE Sports Radio. Make sure you keep it tuned to IE Sports Radio, Spreaker.com for the latest edition of Ringside. All the boxing news you need right here. Keep it tuned, Spreaker.com, IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Lopan, they didn't even want you. <laughs> they didn't even want me. But you know what? Right about now, they have no choice. Looking for the real sports talk? Talk that's for us, the people? Look no further. The Wait a Minute Show, a prime time sports comedy cocktail that tucks you in at night. Join me and Lopan. Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 2 Radio.com and Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Wait a Minute Show.com. Sounds like a plan to me. Ain't that right, Lopan? And me! BS3 sports fans if you love listening to the BS3 sports show check out the weekend wrap up every Monday at 1215 central time 115 eastern recapping the weekend in sports like you never heard it before comedy interactive chat room it's a must listen weekend wrap up on Spreaker.com part of the X squad Check it out. Won't be disappointed. Like you never heard before. 
Catch me Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here on IE Sports Radio. The only question is, are you ready? show with your host Gabriel Montoya. This is the show for soccer, football, football fans, or whatever you call the beautiful game. Every week I tackle the latest and greatest news from around the soccer world, from the English Premier League to the World Cup to MLS, Liga MX, and more. You can listen to the Soccer Scoreboard Show and our lineup of fantastic guests every Friday at noon here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Football fans, well, here we go. One final prime time face off of the evening. I am so excited for this one. All of them have been great. The, the, the last two ladies, just one more applause once again. Miss Wanda and Miss. Adina, they were amazing. Glad to have them both on the show here tonight, and hopefully they can be back for many, many more times. I once said that about this woman on the line right now, and guess what? She's been on the show countless times. I am always so excited to have her on the show because talking football with her is kind of like talking to a football encyclopedia of the Bills. It is amazing. Like, seriously, like, she can just open up the book in her head anywhere and tell you, like, oh, yeah, this happened on this day. Like, it's freaking sweet. So, she's awesome. Like, every bit of awesome you can you can imagine. And the best part about it is, is um, <laughs> she loves to explain uh, her husband, of course, the diehard Browns fan, which is pretty funny because before we even start and before I even introduce you, I'm sorry, but D, I have to ask, how did that day go? Uh, you know, that game is always very cordial in the house. You know, we talk a big game leading up to it, but because we root for each other's teams any other week, 
we're, we can't help but be like, oh, so-and-so is playing good, or oh, that was a great catch, or whatever, you know? So it, it ends up being pretty cordial, and he just doesn't want me to live down that, you know, they won this time, but also it wasn't the most spectacular game on either side. I love this. It, 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 it wasn't. You're right. Two teams that are just, well, one's doing really good and the other one, uh, again, again, again. I mean, gosh dang. I want to see the Browns do good for, like, stop having, look, if you're not going to have a good season, Browns, then stop having good off seasons. Stop that. Like, seriously, because you make me excited and you make me give you A-plus grades for freaking off seasons. Then we get to the season and you're nothing like what you look like on paper. And we're like, on the off season. So come on, Browns. Anyway, so, um, with that said, here we go, y'all. Let's get on into the Thursday afternoon game, because those Buffalo Bills are flying down south to that lovely state of Texas to take on the Dallas Cowboys. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Prime time face-off number three as we get ready for the Buffalo Bills taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Let's boogie! Let's get it, y'all! So here we go. We got the 8-3 and three Buffalo Bills. The 6-5 and five Dallas Cowboys. And representing those Buffalo Bills tonight. She, of course, is from upstate New York. She is a diehard Buffalo Bills fan. And every bit of a... I'm telling you, like... Buffalo Bills extraordinaire, you can ask. She is awesome, and she is a regular here at IA Sports Radio, and what could I say? I, 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 well, she, I'm just so happy to have her on the show every time, and I am really, really hoping that we can get her husband here on the show soon to talk about his Browns. I'm, I promise I won't bag on him. He can bag on my Raiders. My Raiders suck something awful, so I mean, he can bag on them all day if he wants. Anybody can bag on the Raiders, and I'm not going to say anything because we suck. Anyway, with that said, um, a little bit of um, you know punching bag myself right now, but with that said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcoming a diehard Buffalo Bills fan from upstate New York and proud listener of IE Sports Radio. And glad to have her back here again on the show, ladies and gentlemen. The one and only, Miss D. How's it going, D? Hey, it's going great. It's great to be on here again. And I am really looking forward to this game. I am so excited to have a Thanksgiving matchup between these two teams who, you know, back in the 90s had such an intense rivalry at the beginning of the decade. And uh, looking forward to having my family here in the house and my uh, Cowboys grandfather-in-law and my Bill's grandfather here. So it's going to be a good time. Oh, that's going to be fun. <laughs> that's going to be great. Oh, my gosh. You have to tweet me during the day and let me know how that one's going. I can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, he, of course, is representing the Dallas Cowboys. He is every bit of Texas you can ask for. As a matter of fact, he's so Texas that his name is Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, well, nickname, but great guy, man. And I'm just so happy to have him back here on the show he has been i think every time but once this year um being the uh the representing the cowboys here on three now and you couldn't ask for a more diehard guy i'm so glad he can be here part of the show and you can't say enough good things about him i can't say enough good things about him ladies and gentlemen welcoming back here on the show for the who knows how many times here on three and out, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming back the one, the only, Mr. Texas. How's it going, Texas? Doing good. I'm glad you brought up the 90s because uh, I don't know how that went out for the Bills, but I know how that went out for my Cowboys. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Two years in a row. Poor Bills. The four falls. The four falls. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I say that? Did I say that, D? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't be mad. <laughs> so with that said, let's get to it, y'all. So here we go. First things first. <clears throat> we have the away team going first. That is you, Miss D. Let us know. Give us your X Factors for Thursday night. Who are X Factors and why to help you guys defeat these Cowboys on the road? You have one minute on the clock. Begin. All right. Well, you know, the Cowboys, they... They're a good team. Offense is great. Defense is you know, not bad. They, they played a good, solid game against the Patriots last week. But uh, the big X factor, I think, is going to come down to special teams. 
uh, the Cowboys, especially the month of November so far, that's not been great at uh, stopping kicks and punt returners. And he's a guy by the name of Andre Roberts, who is a pro bowl kick returner, who's been running them back pretty good so far this year. So I think uh, he's going to be a big factor in propelling the Bills on uh, Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Well, that sounds pretty... I like that. Okay, so quick and dirty. I like that. Nice stuff there. Uh, of course, getting in your X-Factors. Next up, Mr. Texas, it's all... The floor is all yours. Good, sir. You have one minute on the clock. Who are your X-Factors to help y'all defeat these hot, these red-hot Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving Day in Arlington? Uh, that is actually a good X-Factor. Our special team sucked it up against New England in New England. I, I, I give up I give up the uh, point of emphasis on the coaching, but then again, if you're trying to field crazy punts with a wet ball, which is a, which is also hard. But anyway, so my X factors is Cooper Zeke. Cooper had zero catches in the game against New England. I want to see if he bounces back and comes back on your third ranked defense. Zeke again. Your weak, your weakest point on your defense is your running defense. So I need Zeke to step up, either Zeke or Tony Pollard, either one of them. And then on my defensive X factor is Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis needs to stick on Cole Beasley like there is no tomorrow. I miss Cole Beasley. I miss him with a passion. But it's Jordan Lewis time. Stick, just stick on Beasley. That's all you have to do, Jordan Lewis. Just stick on him like a blanket. I am. I miss Cole Beasley in a Dallas Cowboys uniform, and I'm not even a Dallas Cowboy fan. So, like I was telling D before we got on the phone with you, get Texas. I think the Cowboys. And I don't know if it was a money issue. I don't know what happened, but I know they. they, they <laughs> somebody has to say we messed up for letting that guy go. What was that? It was an internal issue. Oh, that sucks. Because this guy is amazing, and I'm such a big. Yeah, thanks for him. We're, we're pretty happy to have him up in Buffalo. <laughs> I'd be happy to have him. That guy is amazing. So, with that said, let's get on into the uh, the lightning round and have some fun going back and forth here. So. Let's get on into the weaknesses. Texas already opened up the can, the can of worms, and I think we're going to, you know, he might just continue on that or might go a different direction. D, you go ahead and pick a weakness or weaknesses on the Cowboys that you feel your Bills can exploit and take advantage of to win this game on Thursday. You have one minute. Begin. Okay. Well, I think I already mentioned the special teams issues, and that seems to be, you know, a big big issue coming into this game, but, you know, you never know. Um, and also, uh, Van Der Esch, not expected to play again this week, which is a huge win for the Bills, uh, definite blow for the Cowboys themselves. Also, the Cowboys get off to the slow start, and uh, the Bills do too, but the uh, Bills have a knack for coming back and overcoming those slow starts, whereas the Cowboys uh, can't always overcome them, and uh, Josh Allen is one of the best, if not the top ranked fourth quarter quarterback uh, in the league. So, uh, hoping we can maybe get off to a hot start, but if not, at least we've got a, you know, Allen out there in the fourth quarter. And we, we hung in there with the Patriots. And if he had finished, I think it would have might have been a different outcome. So, I'm hoping uh, he can make it through all four on this one and take advantage of hopefully another slow start from the Cowboys. At the buzzer. All right, good job, D. All right, so here we go. Uh, So now that you heard uh, the weaknesses, you have 30 seconds on the clock, Texas. Let us know if you think, okay, you know what? She's got a point or nope, not going to happen. You're delusional. You know That whole deal. So you have 30 seconds on the clock, and then we'll get into your weaknesses on the bills. But let us know, man. 30 seconds. Let us know. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. You think Josh Allen's better than Dak Prescott? That's so sweet. Oh my goodness, that's so sweet. I can't say enough after that. I love it. Okay, so with that said, you have one minute on the clock. Texas, point out the weaknesses on the Bills that you feel that your Cowboys can exploit to win this thing on Thanksgiving. Again, weakness is your rush defense. Um. Our weakness is our secondary, which if our secondary does not play up to what I think it could, 
um, then I could see Josh Allen having a big game. But your weakness on your defense is your rush defense. So I need Zeke, Zeke to uh, get at least 120, 130 yards. Somewhere around there. I'd be happy with that. Uh, and if you stop the run, you still have to deal with Dak, which Dak is first in the league in passing, first in the league in pass yards uh, per game. So um, the weakness is your rush defense. Our weakness is our secondary. Um, Van Der Esch, he was out against the Patriots, and we still held the Patriots to literally one touchdown, and that was after after the fact of uh, uh, a turnover. That was it. Literally, we shut down the Patriots offense in Foxborough without Van Der Esch. So, don't bring up Van Der Esch. <laughs> okay. Well, there you have so, it. So, okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Finish up. Text. Sorry about no, that. Go ahead. You're good, brother. Go You're ahead. good. Okay, well, <laughs> sorry about that, brother. So, okay, with that said, you have 30 seconds now on the clock. What do you think, D? Do you think, you know what, he's got a point there or no? Just not going to happen. Sorry, man. What do you think? Well, yeah, we know our watch defense needs a little work, but it has looked better in the past couple of weeks. But when it comes to the passing game, I've got one guy for you. His name is Trey White. He's a true shutdown corner. He is on the receiver like White on Rice, and, uh, I am confident he can shut down Cooper this week if it comes down to Dak needing pass because uh, he is truly a top Dak quarterback in this league, and I have complete faith in his ability to take okay, him here. Uh, uh, just, just real quick to cut you off, who are you going to put White on? If you put him on Cooper, okay, Cooper has zero catches, but uh, you got Michael Gallup, you got uh, Randall Cobb, you got um, Jason Witten, you got Blake Jarwin. Um, I mean. Who are you going to put, you know, what other corners do you got? Our secondary is our strength. We have one of the top ranked passing defenses in the league. Where are you going to have a safety really guard Randall Cobb? If you are, Randall Cobb is going to get him a lot. I, 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 would, I, can put, uh, I would confidently put our secondary up against any receivers in the league. I have that is one thing. in the league. Yeah, I know you do. And guess what? We have one of the best passing I'm actually very excited to see how they match up because I think it is a good chunk of their Me too. Uh, uh, actually, y'all lost to the pass by six. And didn't their receiver, uh, one of their receivers, just a rookie, put up over 100 yards on y'all? Oh, plus Angelina yeah. Edelman? One of the best. But, Come on, man. but that game, the, the best. Only one because they blocked a punt against us on their special teams. And guess what? They blocked a punt against you guys, too. So uh, They did. They did. Okay, the special teams, we're not even talking about the Patriots special teams because they are in a whole different league right now. Um, and probably the reason the record is as good as it is. But I Anyways, actually think the matchup so will have against the Eagles by 18, and we beat them by 27. That's yeah, another. You know what? That, that's another. We, thing, so. we were missing our best pass defender that week, and that is the first week that our run defense was looking really weak. And at the beginning of the season, our run defense was a strength. We had some issues down the line. They seemed to fix that, and it's back on track. The only excuse I put on my Cowboys is Jason Garrett. That's it. Hashtag fire Jason Garrett. <laughs> so with that said, well, yeah, yeah, no, that's. that's uh, I think that's actually the, the biggest. That is actually the biggest weakness, I think, for your team. But there's yeah, something. Jason Garrett, Coach Platt. Because, uh, you know, what What was that kick that was going mm-hmm. uh, You know, I guess he, he needs to go. But, uh, and, and I'm curious to see how the team reacts to all the hubbub that has surrounded Jerry Jones' comments and, you know, know. decision-making. Every loss. If it motivates them or... Every loss, every loss, even if it's a missed field goal, blame Jason Garrett. (laughs) <laughs> with that said y'all let's get on into the game plan this is the last part of the segment I love I love this y'all are awesome thank you so much for tonight and, and this is this has been a fun one let's get on into the game plan and uh, have some fun with talking about what you believe that what the, but who both of you believe um 
are, uh, you know, what you guys should do, or what your team should do. So, Miss D, once again, you are the away team, so please start us off. You have one minute on the clock. Let us know your game plan for your Buffalo Bills to go on over to Darlington and defeat those Cowboys on Thanksgiving. And, of course, if you'd like to, throw a final score at the end. All right. Well, I have to say shutting down uh, the run game is key here for the Bills defense because, you know, the Cowboys do have some stellar running backs, as we all know, and the offensive line is amazing in in Dallas. That's that's no question. We have to shut down the run game, um, make that tap against our secondary, which I think is our team's greatest strength. Uh, Josh Allen has to continue to be careful with the ball, but also not afraid to play free and, you know, bring it down the field because we do have Cole Beasley, but we also have uh, Brown, who people are sleeping on, but he is slightly racking up the catches and the accolades in the AFC. And, you know, as you said, the secondary in Dallas is a weaker point in the defense, so, you know, we can take advantage of that with some of our guys. I think that would be our best, our best bet in coming out of Dallas with a win. I think it's going to be a close one. I honestly like the matchup a lot. Uh, I don't have any idea what it's going to be. I can't even <laughs> can't even begin to guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know that's that works for me because that's a it's always tough and yeah it's always tough picking a score here so okay with that said uh, all right so well, a little bit over so we'll give you a minute and fifteen seconds um, uh, Mr Texas so let us know brother tell us your actually you know what um, we gotta do a thirty second thing so thirty seconds so let me know if you like her game plan if you think you know what I would do this if I if I was against my Cowboys or no nope, not gonna happen you're delusional so sorry so 30 seconds of that and then we'll get right on into your game plan for your Cowboys to defeat those Bills on Thanksgiving so uh, first up your 30 seconds let us know Texas do you like her game plan what do you think uh, she lost me at Josh Allen that's it she <laughs> lost me at that so I don't know what her game plan was <laughs> as soon as I heard Josh Allen I was like uh <laughs> My ears are shut off. Anyway, so, uh, what was the next part? The my next, game plan? Uh, yes, your game plan against the Bills. All right. Uh, my game plan against the Bills, the Bills must be the most overrated eight-win team in NFL history. Um, people, uh, people talk about the Cowboys can't win big games. Well, it looks like the Bills can't win big games either. The Pats, the Eagles, and the Browns. Oh, uh, hold on. Wait, was that the Browns? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. That's one that Baker Mayfield played for? Yeah, that's right. Anyway, so I see I see the Cowboys exposing the rush defense, and then I see Dak Prescott having an MVP game to shut up the haters from Sunday. Um, I, see, I see a big game from uh, Michael Gallup because White is going to, White is going to uh, be guarding Cooper. So they're going to put him on the hand, and then who else is going to guard Michael Gallup, Randall Cobb, all these other guys? So anyway, is starting with the run, from run to play action, from play action to everything. Everything revolves around the rush defense of the Bills. If they show up and whatnot, then Dak's going to have a big game. If the rush defense does not show up, then Zeke's going to have a monster game. Either way you look at it, you cannot stop our offense if you're the Bills' defense. Um, and then our 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 uh, game plan on defense is going to be just basically blitzing Josh Allen. Josh Allen, out of what I've seen this year, is not good under pressure. He can't really get outside the pocket when uh, when the line collapses around him. But anyway, I have the Cowboys winning this game. 27 to 17. If we lose, it is on Jason Garrett. <laughs> D, what do you think about that? Josh Allen does his best work outside the pocket, and he's a mobile quarterback. He is slippery. He might be a big guy, but he is. He's fast. Is he mobile like Dak? What? Is he mobile like Dak or Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson? Is he mobile like that, or is he mobile like Tom Brady? Old man Tom Brady. He's mobile like. Jack, Russell Wilson, not Lamar Jackson. Oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. He is a mobile quarterback as well as being a strong-armed quarterback. It's what makes him 
such an exciting prospect with such a high ceiling. I know people don't respect him across the league, and that's fine. He's a project. We drafted him knowing that. But I'm very excited by what I'm seeing from him. And you are sleeping on our defense because we are the third-ranked defense for a reason. Uh, we have a defensive-minded head coach who's very, very, very good at what he does. And I, I don't even know what our head coach's coach is mindset is. Anyway. And uh, I... I think you're you're sleeping on my team a little bit too much. I I think it's going to be a closer game than you think, and uh, maybe it comes down to coaching. And if it does, you're at a disadvantage there. Yeah, it is. But I just remember the '90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep bringing up the '90s, but just like Yankees fans with their uh, 27 pennants. Poor Yankees. How how long has it been since it happened? You can't sleep. I hate the Yankees. Living in the past. I, I hate the Yankees, too. I'm a Red Sox fan. Me, too. But, I'm a Green uh, fan, but I would rather be a Red Sox fan than a Yankees fan. But uh, you can't keep living in the past. And, you know, Buffalo <laughs> fans, we know the night well, has I'm, not, I'm, I'm not living in the past. I just know what that Bill's name stands for, and that means two straight losses. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Actually, it's four straight losses, if you want four to get well, I'm not afraid to bring it up. It's Whatever. It's back to the matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The fact that that also is is that was 1990, and you know I was like two. So I was I was two. No, I, I, no, 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 no. I was two. Yeah, I was two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It really does come down to coaching and not talent. I guarantee the Bills will win this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I they figured it. out for rush defense. You, you guys have weapons. I think your record does not show the type of team you are. I think you're fully coached, and uh, the league kind of knows there that. Is three games, there is three uh, games that we should not have lost. One of them was a Patriots a trip and killing these. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, those were ridiculous. That was but, hilarious. Uh, you know, it's the Patriots. And the Jets game, the I can't believe that we lost three. the Jets. That's so true. Yeah, I can't believe you guys lost to the Jets. And I can't either. believe we lost by two against the, uh, the Saints. I see what we lost against the Vikings and the Packers, but... The Saints was a two-point loss against <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater. Anyway, anyway, don't even get me started. Like, My like, Raiders just got blown out by the Jets. How do you think I feel? How do you think I feel? How do you think I feel? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, laugh it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm That's... sorry, Derek Carr. I'm so sorry. Poor Derek Carr. Poor, poor Raiders. Poor Derek Carr. Poor Derek Carr. He deserves better. Our defense is so trash. I'm sorry. But anyway, we'll go down that avenue because I'll. I, it, this will turn into a Raider bashing fest real quick, and it'll be me, the one talking. You guys can join <laughs> in. But yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we we suck. I'm sorry. But with that said, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Miss D and Mr. Texas. Hey, you two shake virtual hands. That was awesome. Great job. Thank you so much for being on tonight's show. Let's get to the voting poll and see what you, the listener. Oh, my gosh. America's team. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Come on. With 57% of the votes. You, the listeners, come on, are going with the Dallas Cowboys to win this thing at a. Oh my God, Miss D, what do you think about that pick? Overrated eight-win team. D, we what do you like think? Being, we like being the underdog, so that's not a problem with us. And you I are the underdog. Yeah, we like being the underdog. Going, going on the road and being an underdog. That's an overrated eight-win team. Oh my we'll goodness. see. We'll see. But I, you know what? You guys are uh, not an eight-win team, so. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, and you're going to lose. At the end of the team. day, at, at the end of the day, wins are the only thing that matters. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it is. If winning, it as, doesn't matter how you win. It matters that you do win. Like yeah. as the great Vince Lombardi said, if winning didn't matter, then why do we keep score? Just saying. So we shall see. Hopefully it turns out for both of you guys. I know only one of you can win. I do not want to tie. So don't think I'm saying that. But I, hey, we'll see. Somebody's going to win. Someone's going to lose. And Are we doing time. predictions for the rest of the week? Just well, just for this. So um, we we, we want uh, uh, Miss D went ahead and said, "Screw it, <laughs> we're going to win." And there's no score involved. Texas. Uh, what was your final score again? 
2717. 2717. All right, sounds pretty good there. So, with that said, that's actually going to do it, Sean. Oh, my bad. I was having a good, we were having a good old time. But I'm just I know, uh, of course, time's getting short. And as I mentioned, D, I know it's already 930 over there. I know it's getting 830 for you, Texas. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this segment. But that was absolutely awesome. And as it goes, I give you guys your time at the end. Of course, you ladies and gentlemen at the end of the show. Miss D, please let all these diehard Bills fans listening right now uh, know where to find you and any more awesome stuff that you may do because you're just awesome. So please let everybody know. <laughs> sure. You can find me on Twitter at ABC of D. That's A-B-C-O-F-D-E-E. Um, I try to live tweet every game. It doesn't always happen because life happens to get in the way, but uh, try to live tweet, and I do try to tweet during other games as well, just kind of given my outsider's opinion, and uh, gave my outsider's opinion on some of those cooking calls in the Cowboys Patriots game last week, so uh, <laughs> um, you guys don't have me out there, and that is awesome. Well, go check out Ms. D. She is awesome. Trust me. Her tweets will crack you up because the, the crap D says is funny. Like, I think sometimes she doesn't even mean to be funny, but she's funny. Like, it's awesome. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a funny person. I am not. <laughs> so when I'm funny, it's completely unintentional. It, it, well, yeah, because it's like sarcasm. It's the best. <laughs> like, I love it. Yeah, like, sarcasm's my jam. It's the, it really, it's awesome. So that makes you funny. I love it. It's, it's, it's awesome. So, Mr. Texas, please let all these dark Texas fans know where to find you, brother. Hey, just to let you know, I'm not tripping over the bill, all right? Just, just saying. Um, um, oh, on Twitter, uh, Texas S Roundups with an S. My other page got deleted somehow. Stupid Twitter. Anyway, um, on YouTube, my YouTube videos also actually got deleted, so I have to start all over on my YouTube channel. Um, but Texas technology. Sports Roundup. But yeah, so... Uh, Texas Sports Roundup on YouTube and uh, Texas S Roundups on Twitter. Sounds good to me. So, all right. Well, with that said, or with that said, Miss D, Mr. Texas, thank you both so much for being on tonight's show. Uh, God bless you both and your families. And please, both of you, have a wonderful, amazing Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving, y'all. And, and like I said, we'll be in the Twitter group on Thanksgiving. If you want to join in, let us know. If not, just mute us. But, hey, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for being on tonight's show. And, really, I appreciate... Um, I appreciate you both for being on the show as many times as you both have. You're both awesome, and I appreciate you so much, and thanks again for everything. So um, we will see you all soon. Take care, and God bless. You too. God bless. Take care, y'all. Thanks again. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. you. All right, y'all. With that said, that will do it. Once again, big round of applause for Miss D and Mr. Texas. Alrighty, so one more question for the well, actually we've got two more questions. We're gonna take a break real quick. I'm gonna ask you one question and then get another question um, when we get back, and that will be as follows. So the next question is what were the two years the Cowboys missed playing on Thanksgiving? That's right, so let us know, y'all. So recap. Question number one. How did the sport of football get started on Thanksgiving? Hint, hint, it wasn't the NFL. After that, next question. Most sacks on Thanksgiving, and how many? And I want the year as well, okay? Next up after that, when was the first NFL game, uh, the first ever NFL game played? Okay, or sorry, when was the first NFL game played, or NFL Thanksgiving game played? Who was it between... What was the final score? Okay. And the next question is, um, what were the two years that the Cowboys missed playing on Thanksgiving? So, ponder all those things there. I'll check the chat room uh, in a minute. And after that, like I said, we got a little bit of commercials to go. When we come back, I'm going to recap week Third, uh, week 12 in the NFL, and that will do it for tonight. Then tomorrow, we'll jump right on in to our next segment, or our next uh, show, where we have a primetime face. We only have two tomorrow for Thursday night, uh, for uh, Sunday Night Football and for Monday Night Football. And then, of course, we're going to give our picks. Um, well, I'll give my picks, and anybody who wants to join me, <laughs> uh, we can jump in and uh, give those picks for tomorrow, of course, for week 13. So, with that said, hang tight, y'all work on those questions. I'll see y'all in the chat room. With that said, 
That will do it for our primetime face-offs tonight. Awesome. One more big, gigantic hand for all of our combatants tonight, all of, all of our participants in the primetime face-offs. Y'all are awesome. We thank you so much, and y'all are amazing. I love you all, and y'all, y'all are awesome, so I appreciate y'all. Anyway, with that said, I tell you a short break, and when we get back, well, it's time to recap week number 12. You're listening to our very special 2019 NFL edition of 3 and Out, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hi everybody, it's Calvin here from USRN, here to give you an important message. Since 2017, we have done our absolute best to provide you with nothing but the highest quality of sports calls in the greatest of quantity possible. Thanks to you, our station has grown more than we ever thought. That's why, with your help, we would like to grow even further Just think, twice the amount of your favorite calls, 24 hours of coverage, talk shows, play-by-play, game-by-game analysis, and so much more. That's right, USRN2 is officially in development, but we can't do it alone. We have set up a GoFundMe page that you can access from our homepage on the left of your screen. We also are planning special giveaways and prizes to our highest owners. Our goal here at USRN is to bring you the best calls possible at no cost to you. In order to continue to do that, we need your help now. Please check out our GoFundMe page, and if you would like to know how you can help, you can email usrnradio at gmail.com. Without your support, we couldn't do what we do. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Vince Wright, the sports governor from the great state of Minnesota, and I want to thank you for listening to Sports Done Right. Make sure you're checking us out on all of our platforms, whether it's Spreaker.com, XSquadAffiliates.com. We're also heard on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network, so keep it tuned here. More great things coming from Sports Done Right. Were you listening to a great game on USRN, but then the Wi-Fi crashed in the final seconds? Or do you simply want to listen to the best calls we here at USRN have to offer? Well, then you need to go check out our Audio Boom page. It holds a collection of our best calls that you don't want to miss. How do I get there, you ask? You can download the Audio Boom app and look up Ultimate Sports Radio, or simply go to audiobook.com slash ultimate sports radio. And as always, thanks for listening and making USRN one of the most talked about sports networks on Mixler.com. Here comes the pitch, and it comes in wide. On the BS3 Sports Show. Welcome to the BS3 Sports Podcast. We hope your experience with us is amazing. Sports talk, comedy, social issues, and more. BS3 is the best source. Can you dig it, Hey USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Attention all sports fans! If you're someone who wakes up each morning with a list of sporting events to go along with your to-do list for the day, then you just might be a diehard. The world of sports is as vast as the ocean is deep, including the major leagues, the minor leagues, the colleagues, and everything in between. This is me, your boy Larry B of IE Sports Radio, welcoming you to join me every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on The Defining Moment, a show that focuses on what really matters in the sports world, sports themselves, and nothing outside of them. Once again, tune in for the defining moment with me and Boy Larry B every Monday evening at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern on IE Sports Radio, right here on Spreaker.com. We'll see you there.
going on, football fans? This is me, your boy Larry, inviting you to join myself, Callum Reynolds, Mike Pat, and John Felipe for one of the most electrifying football shows you have ever heard. Three and out, right here at IE Sports Radio. Recap of the week before, a preview of what's to come, and of course, three hardcore head to head primetime face offs. Each week, you don't want to miss it. That is correct. You don't want to miss it. And we are right back at it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an awesome show and an awesome day. If you've been hanging out around the IA Sports Radio airwaves with the IA Sports Radio Network in the last couple of days, well, hopefully you've enjoyed yourself. Earlier this week, or actually yesterday, Mr. Phil Jones started us off with the unfiltered truth. Of course, his um, you know his Raider expertise. That was an awesome show. Got him. I gotta check that out. But um, I know it was an awesome show because Phil's awesome, man. So after that, check out, of course, college volleyball and high school volleyball as well as uh, getting into professionals. Even Mr. Taryn Rodriguez with Set Point, brand new volleyball show here. I think he's like seven or eight shows in, so he's been doing it you know a few months already. But it has been awesome. Great Great stuff, Taryn. If you're listening, I know you are, man. You just got you got the question right, by the way. The last question um, that was asked. So <clears throat> great stuff. And of course, uh, earlier today, Mr. Taryn Rodriguez and myself on the defining moment. That was a fun show. We talked, of course, all sports. Tons of great stuff there. Lots of football. And basically, I'm just going to recap some of what we talked about earlier on, on the defining moment. But we'll get into that momentarily with a recap of week 12 in the NFL. And of course, tomorrow, join Mr. Taron Rodriguez and myself at 12 p.m. Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time for 3 and Out College Edition as we get ready or as we talk about the uh, tons of college football, y'all. Triple CAA. So proud of my Riverside Tigers, man. The team I used to play for. Okay, RCC. I'm super excited. I mean, we just won in the semis for the Southern, and we're going, you know, to the finals of the of the uh, of the Southern of the trips. The Triple CAA of the South, and then the North, of course. That's going down on Saturday, and we're going to see if we end up playing in the national championship. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, we got the NJCAA national championship. Coming up versus Lackawanna and versus, um, sorry, versus Lackawanna versus Mississippi Gulf Coast. That's coming up on uh, December 5th, so next month. Uh, yeah, well, next week, basically, eight days away. And then, of course, we've got some NAIA, the first round of their tournament is officially done. The uh, NCAA Division Three and Division Two, the first round of their tournaments are done. We had Selection Sunday for the FCS last week. So their tournament is set and ready to go this weekend, I believe. And then, of course, college football playoff, the brand new top five or top 25 is out. I haven't even seen it yet, so don't spoil it for me. I'm going to go take a look at it after the show, but I know that was just released earlier, so we will get to that. And that is that, y'all. So with that said, hopefully you've enjoyed tonight's show. I know I definitely have. It's been a lot of fun. So let's get on in. So we have a lot more to go, actually, after that. Tomorrow we have our very special, well, another three and out. Of course, we get ready to talk about week 13. Uh, we get ready for as a matter of fact, we got to get ready for the two primetime face-offs for tomorrow. So we have Patriots at Texans. So we got to have a good one there. And then we got the Vikings at Seahawks. So let's see what we can gather up for those uh for those, you know, for those for those games or those primetime face-offs, my bad. Loss of words, just thinking about so many things at one time. So, anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and recap. We only got 20 minutes left here, so let's go ahead and recap the uh, Week 12 in the NFL. So, quick and dirty, Taryn and I did this earlier on the Defining Moment, so I'll just be really quick with it. If you want more of that, well, check it out on that show as well for two people's opinions. This is just mine. So, first and foremost, Texans and Colts on last Thursday, it was... Anything but, but uh, you know, uncompetitive. This was a very good game. I enjoyed every moment of it. And it just wasn't enough for the Colts. They had so much. They had so much on their side. It just wasn't working. Unfortunately, they just couldn't get it done. Not enough umph. And, uh, you know, the biggest part was the Texans were just a big, you know, they, they had a big uh, second half. And well, I mean they had equal equal. They both they scored ten and ten. But you know they had a pretty balanced game, if you will. And the Colts just couldn't capitalize in the fourth quarter. The uh, 
Texans did. They were trailing 17-13 to 13 going into the fourth quarter. And, well, the Texans pulled this thing off. Two huge passes, man. Hopkins is amazing. This dude catches huge ball. Actually, it was Fuller with those two big catches, I think. Or it might have been. I don't know. We, so a, a really good receiver, Fuller or Hopkins. One of them caught these amazing ca- passes. But anyway, um, big victory here. Texans win it 20-17. to They advance to 7-4 on the season as the Colts will drop to 6-5. and Next up, we have here Buccaneers over the Falcons. This was just the game that, you know, I didn't really care for <laughs> because it was just really, you know, it was the Falcons being the hit-or-miss team that they have been. Jameis Winston had a pretty good day overall. Big day for the Buccaneers. They pulled this thing off. They are now, uh, they won 35-22. They're now 4-7 and seven on the season as the Falcons will drop to 3-8. and eight. After that, we have the Bills and Broncos. Another uncompetitive game from the Broncos. The Broncos are just terrible. I was talking to one of my old coaches, and it's crazy. He says since they won the Super Bowl, they've they've already started seven QBs, or this will be their seventh QB they've started since then. So it's been a rough go for these guys. Uh, the Bills won a pretty good game. You know, the Bills, we just talked about that right now. They look pretty good, and I'm really excited to see these teams, uh, will this team get better? I think Beasley is the real deal, so I'm really hoping that, you know, they can get that, um, you know, they can, that Allen King is continuing to control that arm, but more than anything, I just want to see Beasley do good, and uh, I, I like this team. I really do. I think the Bills are, are moving forward in a great way. They're 8-3 and three on the season, and Denver is now 3-8. and eight. Then we get to the Bears and the Giants. This was just a pathetic game, because both these teams were just bad. The Bears just haven't been any bit of any bit of what they've been last year. They have completely fallen off. Uh, let's just be real, they're not making the playoffs this year, and if they do, it's a sliver, and I, well, I didn't know how far they would go. Trubisky's just having a tough time. The defense is not looking that great. However, they played a JV team. I mean, they played the, the freaking Giants, so I mean, you, you would hope to get a victory. Daniel Jones is coming to his own. Not a bad day for him. Barkley, uh, it's been a rough year for him, but a lot of teams are game planning for this guy. So, I mean, you know, it's what it is. Decent day uh, for the Bears, but still nothing too impressive. They win 19-14. to They jump to 5-6 and six in the season, and the Giants will drop to 2-9. and nine. Next up, the Steelers over the Bengals. This was not nothing to even talk about that much. Uh, Hodges, you know, jumps in after Rudolph, and now Hodges is now the starter. Finley, apparently, who I thought was the best player, the best quarterback in the Senior Bowl, has been benched for the previous starter, Andy Dalton. I don't think it's going to matter much. My bad, but it is what it is. Dalton, uh, Dalton, Finley. I don't care who you put back there right now. The Dolphins. I mean, the Dolphins. <laughs> They're kind of like the Dolphins, except the Dolphins win um, at least a few games. But the Bengals just aren't there. The Steelers, well, they whoop de doo. They won a game that they should have won. So sixteen to ten, they went on the road. They jumped to six and five in the season, and the Bengals will drop to zero and eleven. Next up, the Browns will defeat the Bills once again. Nothing to nothing to get excited about. The Browns all had really good numbers. However, guess what? The Bills. I mean, they played the uh, Dolphins and whoop de doo. The Dolphins actually put up more points than I thought they would. Forty one to twenty four. Final score there. Browns will jump to five and six in the season as the Dolphins will fall to two and nine. Saints and Panthers turned out to be a really good game. I thought it was going to be extremely lopsided. However, it was not extremely lopsided and turned out to be a decent game 34 to 31 they would uh, the Saints would win on a game winning field goal by Will Lutz a 33 yarder good game for the most part Breeze had a you know pretty decent game he did throw a pick uh, Allen had a pretty good game he threw, threw, threw three touchdowns both him and Breeze threw three touchdowns the defense is really starting to ramp up for the Panthers but I just don't see anything with the Saints right now that show any signs of slowing down they're showing some mediocrity at the moment and I don't really care for that. But then again, I know that they're just a bunch of humans, and we all make mistakes and everything. They're a very good team. But I think, the, honestly, more than anything, the Panthers were just more driven. And they came out to play, and I think they might have even been a little underestimated by those Saints. Regardless, the Saints win it once again, 34-31. to They advance to 9-2, and the Panthers will fall to 5-6. and The Seahawks defeat the Eagles, as I've been saying all season long. The Eagles play to everybody's level. There is nothing there that says Super Bowl team or even playoff caliber team. They're a 5-6 and six team now. They're anything but competitive. I mean, they're competitive when they want to be competitive. And they, like I said, they play to everybody's level. The Seahawks actually had a tough time with them. Not sure how. Rashard Penny had an amazing day. 
But 9-2 and two on the season, they go as the Seahawks win 17-9. to nine, Looking pretty good. And I'm really excited to see this team moving forward. I like I like the Seahawks, and I feel like this team can actually go as far as they want to. Redskins over the Lions. This says so much about the Lions, because are you serious? It's the Redskins. This is like losing to the Dolphins. I mean, are you serious? I just don't see this. I'm really annoyed, because as I said earlier... I am a Matt Patricia fan, so I am supporting the Lions a lot right now. But the Redskins, you know what? They earned it. They were able to pull it off. Haskins not looking so bad back there um, behind center. You know, decent day at the office. 19-16, to 16, they pull this thing off. They win it uh, at home, and they advance to 2-9 on the season as the Lions will drop to 3-7-1. and one. Next up here, we had a game that was just really weird because the Jaguars were great, and now they're just not. There's nothing... I, I don't even understand how this team is, uh, you know, how they were so competitive, and now it's like they fell off, and it sucks because Foles was like their dude, okay, and then out of nowhere, um, you know, he gets hurt, that sucks, but Gardner Minshew jumps in, cool, yeah, it's great, then um, Minshew gets benched, you know, Foles comes back, it's great, but now it's like, it's weird, because like something happened, now it's like they're not that same competitive team, it's not Foles' fault, I'm just saying that, I don't know what the hell happened to the Jaguars, but they're just not, yeah, they're just, I don't know, anyway, the uh, Titans win this one 42 to 20. I just want to see them get some kind of momentum going. I hope Mariota goes somewhere else. If they don't keep him there in Tennessee, I want him to go somewhere else and shine because the guy deserves it. He's a good guy, and I think he's a good athlete, so it is what it is, but Tannehill looks like he's the guy there right now. 42-20. to 20. The Titans win this one on well, at home. They advance to 6-5, and five, and the Jaguars will fall to 4-7. and seven. After that, my beloved Raiders, they just get destroyed, and it was hilarious, but it is what it is. You know, everyone's talking all these positive things about us, and that's a wonderful thing. I'm not trying to bash us, but I know that our defense is trash. And with that kind of defense, you can't win games. The Jets were definitely prepared. My coach, Coach Bronco, from back in the day, sent me a message, and I got a little defensive over it. Sorry. Just want to publicly apologize to you, Coach. I uh, just want to publicly, uh, publicly apologize to you, Coach Bronco. I got defensive. But, uh, you know, he said that, yeah, they, they can stop that run, and they did, and they looked good. And Sam Darnold looked good, so fought on USC, but unfortunately it was against my Raiders. Is what it is. 34-30. to 30, The Raiders look absolutely terrible. Hopefully we can come back and play a good game versus the Chiefs because this would be for the division at the moment, I think. Um, so the Jets, so we'll get there momentarily. The Jets go to 4-7 and seven on the season as the Raiders drop to 6-3 and three. after that. <clears throat> Sorry. We have here... Uh, after that, we have the Packers and, oh, sorry, the Patriots and the Cowboys. Long story short, the Patriots, Cowboys, really wet, damp type of game, but overall, not a bad day for either quarterback. It was just a tough go with all the weather, hold on to the ball, all that good stuff, some weird penalties. End of the day, the Patriots will win a hard-fought victory 13-9. to They jump to 10-1 and on the season as the Cowboys will fall to 6-5. and After that, we have Sunday Night Football. How about those Niners, y'all? Where's that applause button? Because this team deserves it. Are you serious? They look so good right now. Absolutely blew the doors off of the Packers. And the Packers are a pretty good team, man. 37 to 8. The uh, the San Francisco 49ers jump to 10 and 1 on the season as the Green Packers will fall to 8 and 3. And then Monday Night Football, the Ravens just absolutely obliterated the Rams. 45 to 6. Nothing to even talk about here. Lamar Jackson goes off. Those are five touchdowns. Ingram, 111 yards. Boykin, 54 yards. They just looked good all the way around. 45 to 6 final score. The, the uh, Ravens will jump to 9 and 2 on the season as the Rams will fall to 6 and 5. Anyway, with that said, the last question on the night. I gotta sneak this one in there. Final question on the night. They, uh, who threw the most touchdowns on Thanksgiving? What year? How many? So, let me know and I'll get to all those tally marks pretty soon here. But, now we're going to, as I always say, steal a page out of Nico Green's book from the Neutral Zone and talk about if the playoffs were to start tomorrow. So, let's get on over to the playoffs and talk about, uh, so I, my bad, I just wanted to say uh, good points earlier brought up by Mr. Taron Ter- Ter- Rodriguez as well, so if you want to check that out from earlier on the Defining Moment, go check it out, and uh, that was our recap uh, I got some good stuff from him, so I used some his stuff. Sorry, man, I had to steal some of your stuff there. I hope the recap of the NFL, but great stuff as always, brother. And uh, thanks for uh, being a part of the iSports Radio family, man. So, anyway, with that said, let's roll on over now into the playoffs. And if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, this is how it would look. So, it would be in the AFC, 
Okay, the first seed, the Patriots. Second seed, Baltimore. And then it would be Houston, Kansas City, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. This means that Pittsburgh would go to Houston and Buffalo would go to Kansas City. In this case right now, I would actually take uh, Houston over Pittsburgh. I don't think Pittsburgh would even give them that much of a fight. I mean, it would be a fight. Don't count the Steelers. But I think Houston would just take, you know, virtually, well, well actually just, you know, would, would win this thing. So I got Houston moving forward. Um, and they would automatically go to face Baltimore. That means the winner of Kansas City and Buffalo would win it. That means I have Kansas City defeating Buffalo. My bad, D. I guess in the Buffalo, I mean, that Kansas City is just performing a lot better right now. Uh, and I think they would find a way to win it, especially at home. That means Kansas City would go to New England. This is where I feel like New England would kick it into high gear and win this game. And that's why I think Baltimore would defeat Houston. And in a very good, tough physical game, however, I think it would be the rematch of earlier this year, where I think the, um, New England would actually game plan and find a way to defeat Baltimore. I really do think that would happen, guys. Just saying. It's it's, it's New England. I've learned to not mess with New England and go against <laughs> New England. So, I would have New England going back to the bowl, um, but it would be a very good game with the, with the uh, with the Ravens, but that's just my thoughts. Let me know in the chat room what you think. And of course, in the NFC, we have San Francisco with the first overall seed. Then we have um, New Orleans with the second seed. Then we have Green Bay, Dallas, Seattle, and Minnesota. Minnesota would be going to Green Bay, which this is the same playoff picture as, as last week. Tara and I talked about it last week. So, yeah, I would have uh, Green Bay defeating Minnesota. I think this would be a really good close game. But that would automatically mean that Green Bay would go to New Orleans and the winner of Dallas and Seattle would go to San Francisco. I think at this point in time, I still think Seattle is the better team. I think Seattle would win at Dallas and go on to San Francisco well, or to Santa Clara, where virtually I think at this point in time, Seattle would find a way to pull this thing off. I'm so serious. I know Seattle's a great team. I don't want to diss them, but I just have this feeling Seattle would find some way to win this game, and I think Seattle right now, the way they're playing, would end up winning. That's why it would be Green Bay, well, the winner of Green Bay and New Orleans hosting the NFC Championship, and I think New Orleans would get the better of Green Bay. Uh, it would be a good game, but I would take Green Bay right now, or I would take New Orleans right now, which means that Seattle would go to New Orleans, where they would fall to the Saints. It would be a really good game, but I think it'll be, uh, I think it would be, um, I actually had Green Bay defeating New Orleans in that game a couple like last week but see how it changes up just you know just from my thoughts once again my thoughts and opinions but Green Bay gets a big victory um well, I'm sorry New Orleans I think in, in this case would defeat the Seahawks and New Orleans would move on to the Super Bowl and I think that they would play the Patriots or I think the Patriots would actually win this game too I know I'm not being biased because <laughs> my boy Alex is a Patriots fan but I just think that they're still the best team in the NFL and they find ways to do it uh, I mean, they're just that team. They're a tough team who makes things happen, and I really do think that they will find some way to do it. If they don't, cool, but I just... It's been two decades of the Patriots doing stuff like this and winning, so it's kind of hard to not go that way, guys. So, anyways, those are my thoughts on... Um, if the playoffs were to start tomorrow, currently as of right now, let's take a look at the overall standings. Uh, courtesy that was courtesy of the ESPN Sports Center app, and this is also courtesy of the ESPN Sports Center app. So, here we go. In the uh, the AFC East, we have New England at ten and one, Buffalo at eight and three, um, the New York Jets at four and seven, and Miami at two and nine. In the AFC North, we have Baltimore at nine and two. We have Pittsburgh at six and five, Cleveland at five and six, and Cincinnati at zero and eleven. In the AFC South, we have Houston at seven and four, Indiana, oh sorry, Indiana, Indianapolis at six and five, Tennessee at six and five, and Jacksonville at uh, four and seven. And in the AFC West, we have the Kansas City Chiefs at seven and four. Yeah, which of course means that they win next week if the Raiders somehow win, which. I, don't know if we will, but that would be more tied. And if not, well, then they take a two-game lead, <laughs> the Chiefs. So, uh, the Raiders at 6-5, and five, Los Angeles Chargers at 4-7, and seven, and the Denver Broncos at 3-8. and eight. Moving on to the NFC. In the NFC East, we have the Dallas Cowboys at 6-5, and five, the Philadelphia Eagles at 5-6, and six, the New York Giants at 2-9, and nine, and the Washington Redskins at 2-9. and nine. In the NFC North, we have Green Bay at eight and three, Minnesota at eight and three, the Chicago, uh, Chicago Bears at five and six, and the Detroit Lions at three seven and one. In the NFC South, we have New New Orleans at nine and two, Carolina at five and six, Tampa Bay at four and seven, and Atlanta at three and eight. And in the NFC West, we have San Francisco at ten and one, Seattle at nine and two. 
um, Los Angeles, the Los Angeles Rams at six and five, and the Arizona Cardinals at three seven and one. Kind of crazy that this year the two teams who have a tie are have the same exact record right now in week. Uh, going into week 13, so <laughs> after 12 weeks, so that's crazy, but anyway, y'all, with that said, that will do it for tonight's show, so let's go ahead and jump on into the chat room, I've seen we had a plenty of chats, my apologies, y'all, for not being so interactive with you guys tonight, it was awesome, we had a really good show, um, and a really big turn up, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, showing in the chat room, so I just want to give the applause button for y'all, thank you all so much for being a part of tonight's show, and let's get into the answers here of tonight's show, and I have to go all the way back to the very beginning, by the way, Terrence says, oh, babe, big, big ups, man, Terrence says, happy, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, I think is what he meant, he put, uh, happy early Thanksgiving, uh, to everyone, I hope you all have an amazing holiday, enjoy your holiday, and football, and don't eat too much, just kidding, eat as much as you want, thanks, brother, says, I'm thankful for my family, uh, slash friends who have given me support through the good times and the bad, I don't know where I'd be without them, I'm also thankful for Larry, oh, thanks, man, who has gotten me into podcasting, as well as the rest of the iSports Radio family, I'm looking forward to next year, God bless, hey, God bless you too, man, thank you for being a part of the iSports Radio family, as well as all of you listeners out there, so, let's get on into... The response is here, and it looks like, let's see. Okay, so the first question, we only have five minutes left here. So the first question was, um, who started, how did Thanksgiving football start? It was actually a high school and college tradition. I got that from the NFL Hall of Fame website, as I did a couple of these questions. So I'm pretty sure some of you found the website already. But uh looks like... Uh, Texas did answer an NFL question. Uh, oh, sorry, NFL. I think he said uh, Detroit and uh, Dallas, though they aren't necessarily, you know, the ones who started it. You know, kind of, you know, they, they did start. They started playing. The Lions started in '34. Yes, and the Cowboys in '66. I didn't know about '66, but there you go. So Texas got that. Yes, but it was actually a college and high school thing before. Terrence says Thanksgiving Day football game. Became an institutionalized fixture of the org- of organized football in, uh, football in 1982. <laughs> I mean, 1882. Nice work, man. Uh, when the Intercollegiate Football Association determined to hold an annual collegiate championship game in New York. Um, in New York City on Thanksgiving Day between the two leading teams in the association. Previously, the champion was determined by a team's record over the entire season against all members of the association. Rutgers and Princeton played at, uh, and Rutgers won in the, well, in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Wow, that's definitely the, a big time answer right there. Well, awesome stuff. I remember even seeing Texas saying, yeah, just kidding. That deserves 50 shirts. <laughs> There's a you know, big answer. So good job there, man. Thank you so much, uh, Taryn, for that. Next up, it was Ezekiel Ansa who got the most sacks and what game? I thought it was 2015, but it is what it is. That's good. It was eight and a half sacks by Ezekiel Ansa. Um, so good job there. And it was the Detroit Lions. So I thought it was 15. That's why I thought I read. But is what it is. Uh, I wanted the the time as well, Texas. My bad. He only had eight and a half sacks in Ansa, where Taryn at least gave me a year. But I'll give that one to Taryn to. Uh, Texas to make it even. Next up, the uh, start of, what was it? Next was the third question was, uh, what was the first NFL game ever played? Who was it between? What was the final score? And Taron actually, Texas got half of it. He put Lions, but Taron put the Lions and Bears game. Yes, Lions uh, dash Bears is a bit tough to predict. Consider, oh, I'm sorry about that. No, I don't think that was it. I'm sorry about that. But, okay, um, Actually, I thought it was Lions and Bears, but apparently Terra Terran dig- dug even deeper. But the first NFL Thanksgiving game day was in 1920. <clears throat> the Akron Pros beat the Canton Bulldogs 7 0 on November 25th, 1920. So, wow, he even knows more than me. Awesome. You should be the one hosting this show, Terran. No, awesome stuff there. So, good answer. He said, then in addition to the Akron Pros and the Canton Bulldogs, there were five other games that were played November 5th, 1920. Nice. The, the, the Decatur Stanleys, they, which they were actually, they turned into the Chicago Bears, uh, beat the Chicago Tigers 6 0. The Illyria, Illyria, I don't know butcher the name, uh, <clears throat> Athletics and Columbus Panhandles played in a 0 0 tie. The Dayton Triangles beat the Detroit Heralds 28 0, and the Chicago Boosters beat the Hammond Pros 27, and all uh, Tonawanda beat the Rochester Jeffersons 40, 14 to 13. So, next up, Darren, next up. Uh, I asked the next question was what were the first what were the two years the Cowboys um, missed and the yes, S I've never seen Texas actually got this uh, I think he got this before Taron did he I don't know let's take a quick look here 
Uh, wow, yeah, Taryn, 1975 and 67, so nice, I'm mean, sorry, 75 and 77, good job there, and then the last question is, yeah, exactly, last question is, um, who threw for the most touchdowns Thanksgiving, what year, how many, <clears throat> and yes, I remember Googling this, <laughs> and the answer to the final question, Taryn says, the answer to the, fu- to the final question, uh, who is Peyton Manning, who had six touchdowns and uh, for the Indianapolis Colts in a 41-9 to win over the Detroit Lions back in 2004. I didn't even know the day, uh, the date, but or the score. I didn't know the score, but hey, good job, Taryn. You won yourself a t-shirt, brother. I was going to send you one anyway, but you won a t-shirt, man. So big, uh, big ups, Mr. Taryn Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, man. You won yourself a t-shirt, even though you already have one coming <laughs> that i got to send soon. And that will be that. Cue the music, because I'm out of here. That'll do it for tonight, y'all. This has been Free and Out, our very special 2019 uh, edition of, uh, sorry, 2000, our very special 2019 NFL Thanksgiving edition of Free and Out. This is me, your boy Larry B. You can follow me on Twitter at the T H E E underscore LB53. Go say follow as a whole at iSports Radio on Instagram and on Twitter. Give us a like on Facebook at iSports Radio as well. Check us out on iSportsRadio.com. I will see y'all tomorrow, y'all. Back here on the airways for Three and Out Calls Edition and Three and Out tomorrow. We'll see you soon. Until then, take care. And as always, God bless.